<coughs> Happy Monday! Do you see that guy running Africa is actually going to be able to finish running Africa? That's pretty sweet. I'm excited for him. Sorry. How are you? I am. I forgot to turn the Z on, so I'm going to do that. You guys ready? Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to the stream. I hope you kept up like, you know, a good citizen. You kept up with your Asian cup. I, I hope you kept up with your Asian cup. I hope you kept up with your AFCON. What were you even doing if you were if you weren't doing that this weekend? Watching NFL, watching FA Cup. Huh. I mean, to be fair, the FA Cup was exciting. Congr congrats to Maidstone, Jin. Thank you for the three months. I appreciate that. Hi Z, real Jeff Bezos money here. I work for Amazon. Oh, nice dude. Sick Moise, Thank you for so much for the six months. Koala, thank you for the three years. Congrats to the Z Bacon. Adam, thank you for the Prime. And Kofskine, thank you for the 25 months. Master Trams, thank you for the tier one. Hello, let's go, dude. I was reading a book, two of them, actually. Whoa. Qatar, Sag, wait, they scored. Oh. Bro, the upset is off. Palestine took an early one nothing lead, but Qatar has scored twice. Yeah, Asian Cup is losing its mind this morning. Sorry, the reason the stream started late today was I was emotionally recovering from Iraq getting screwed. Do they actually, the Asian Cup is on Paramount Plus in the U.S. It's like easier to watch than AFCON. It's like easier to watch than AFCON. I, I just pull up my Paramount Plus. Then I have to use any alternative medicine sites, you know. Did you know there's a basketball manager that's coming out? It'd be super interesting to see you try it out. Hashtag ad, you know what I'm saying? Tajikistan's going to the semis. Ah, but Tajikistan is is going to the quarters. That doesn't happen in any other like any of the other tournaments. They're the only debutante in the tournament. Egypt lost, yes, but did you see the footage of DR Congo? Like Kinshasa, the capital of the of Dr. Congo, celebrating after they beat Egypt. How how can you not be excited about that? So obviously AFCON knockouts started two days ago. We're in day three of the AFCON knockouts. We're in day two of the Asian Cup knockouts. We got a lot of craziness going on. It is a very rare instance where both of those are going on at the exact same time. And so that that's kind of heavenly because you're getting nonstop, constant chaos. Asian Cup knockout started with Tajikistan knocking out a much better UAE team on penalties to get to the quarterfinals in their first ever Asian Cup, which is super cool. If you look at the roster of the Tajikistan team, like they all play in Tajikistan. It's very much a like, we're all in this together. And, you know, like, it's it's just like a bunch of dudes. Whoa, Muckle Sloth. I can't even count. How many is that? 20? 20 gifted subs, dude? 20 gifted subs, Muckle Sloth. 20? They <laughs> cover high school musical. I mean, it's very popular in Tajikistan, if you didn't know. Brutus, thank you so much for the prime. Muckle Slot, thank you so much for giving 20 people the ad free experience, the emotes, access to the subsection of the Discord. If you got one of those gifted subs, be sure to say thank you and thank you so much for supporting the stream as well, my brother JC with the, uh, the prime, the gift to courtesy of Jeff Bezos. I, I can't read. We're back to not being able to read. Thank you for the five months of the prime, brother. And Murderous Otter, thank you for the 28 months. I appreciate you too. Thanks for supporting the stream, dude. Muckle Sloth. 
trying to decide how I feel about that name, but it's pretty solid. But yeah, Tajikistan, it's mostly dudes from the Tajik League. They're just kind of, you know, they're vibing. You know, how was my weekend? It was good. I drank too much. I'm going to be entirely transparent with you. I don't uh, party too hard. I had too much to drink um, on Saturday and absolutely ruined my Sunday because I felt like I'd been hit by whatever Oppenheimer was working on. Yeah. Now, I, 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 you know, every once in a blue moon, you have a few too many beers. That I did, it hadn't happened to me in a long time. Did that to myself on Saturday. So we spent Sunday in a coma, and we just woke up from that coma and really excited about it. Um, yeah, really, you know, feel a new lease on life, came back to life, reanimated, spawned back in. Uh, so, you know, enthusiastic. Crank Hockey, thank you so much for the prime, dude. Burnt Bridges, thank you for the tier one. Thank you for supporting the stream. When's the next call stream, by the way? Whenever that man is free. He'll, he, 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 like, sends me a text. He's like, how's that day work? I'm like, works. He has a very, like, you know, asymmetrical schedule. So it's kind of just whenever he's free. Yeah, love these coma feelings, just watching vids and doing nothing. Yeah. Well, I'm like, you know, I cooked like eight episodes of Kitchen Nightmares and watched NFL. Am I going to be posting call streams to YouTube? Yes. Yes. Soon. But yes. Angola beat Namibia. I wanted Peter Shalalile supremacy. Come on. The, the farthest Peter Shalalile was going to get Namibia was the round of 16. Although Angola looked good, dude. 3-0, 3-0 from Angola, 3-0. Secret guest this week. I actually think I'm going to have the secret guest in a YouTube video instead of a stream. So I'm sorry I debated you guys with that. They're still super down, but I think it'd be, it would work better as a stream based off what we wanted to do. So... Did I see the Lions bottle the game? I did. Yes. Chiefs 49ers, the Super Bowl of unlikable people. Dude, the Chiefs are have become incredibly unlikable. Um, I recognize their greatness, but I am I'm I would I well, what was Winston Churchill's? Um I <laughs> there's a Winston Churchill quote that I think sums up how I feel about Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, right? And that it doesn't matter who they're playing, I would root for them, right? So Winston Churchill once said that if Hitler invaded hell, I would at least make a favorable mention about the devil in the House of Commons. I think that's one of the funniest quotes. Yo, Moist, what? That's 50 gifties from Moist. Out here making 50 people's days, dude. Thanks so much for supporting the stream with that. Giving 50 people the ad-free stream experience. I tell you what. That's a lot of gifted subs, Moist. That's a lot of gifted subs. If you got one, be sure to say thank you. And there's a lot of you guys out there that caught one of them gifted subs. Enjoy your bacon. Enjoy your emotes. Jeff, thank you for the 10. Oh. What a way to start the week, dude. Moy, thank you for the 50. Jeff, drop it in with the 10. Thank you for making Tim Moore's people's days. Thank you for supporting the stream with kindness, Jeff. And enjoy the bacon, enjoy the emotes. Make sure you get the subsects of the Discord if you happen to catch one of those. Uh, and say thank you as well. Jeff, thank you for the 10. Knucklehead, thank you for the five, dude. Five more. Five more gifted subs. It's Knucklehead. Chad, so some love to Knucklehead, to Jeff, and obviously to freaking Moise who dropped the fat 50 Thank you, thank you for the 32 months, Knucklehead. I appreciate you throwing some kindness around when you were bouncing your sub back, you know what I'm saying? Oh, thank you guys so much for all the gifted subs. We are going, we're, we're doing another Faroe Islands video right now. 
Scythian with 10 gifted subs. Mucklesaw throws down another gifted. Cynthia, thank you for the 10 gifted, dude. Thank you for making 10 people's days. If you got to make sure you're thanking the right person because you might just be getting a gifted sub. You don't even know where it's from. Muckle Sloth now has 21 gifted subs. Gifted Peg in a sub. You get an anime wow, my dude. Ted said, thank you for the three months. I'm going to join in. Sidwin said, thank you. Uh, so I'm throwing the three months, too. Hope the stream will be full of celebration. I'm hoping, too, dude. We got a chance to win the league today. Um, We got a chance to win the league today. Cape Verde and Mauritania is going on right now. What a freaking round of 16 match. Palestine and Qatar is in the second half. It's a one goal game. Absolutely insane. My girlfriend despises Z solely because of his liberal use of the, the what? That? I can't hear you. I can't. I <laughs> Turfus Maximus, thank you for the 22 months. Do you know what that means? No, seriously. Tell me what that means. It means you're two months away from Diamond Bacon, Derpus. That's what that means. Woof, thank you for the uh, gifted sub to Robertini. More anime wows, anybody? Raven's Ward, thank you for the four months. Knucklehead dropping in with the 27 months. Have a great end of the season. Thank you. Lord, thank you for the 15 months. Let's have a great week. Let's, let's, let's make the executive decision to have a great week. We got AFCON and Asian Cup knockouts. We might be moving jobs. We've got how many matches left in the season with uh, Saint Etienne? I, I don't have the game open. How many matches are left in the season with Saint Etienne? The tire barrier, they give it the two months. The Lions lost because the Pistons won. I saw that. That is just the way that it works, allegedly. What game are we playing, football manager? Is that. AFCON's my favorite. Dude, AFCON has not been a dumpster fire at all. AFCON, in fact, has been tremendously well, like the quality of play. Awesome. Um, obviously, there have been some kind of more chaotic back end sort of things, but there have been some brilliant goals in AFCON. The officiating has been really good. And there's only been one minor controversy where Guinea sat out one training because they felt they hadn't been paid their uh, their thing yet. And then, they, of course, Guinea showed up and scored a 98th-minute winner, which had limbs, dude. Limbs. Kirby, thank you for the three months. <laughs> Knucklehead, thank you for gifting a sub to Juiced. Knucklehead, thank you for a couple of, couple of gifteds on top of that. Muckle, thank you for the 21. Knucklehead's got seven. Jeff, thank you for the 10. Moist, I mean moist. Thank you for the 50, dude. F 50 is crazy. 50 gifted subs is crazy. I, I cannot thank you enough. But yeah, AFCON's actually been really well uh, well done, I think. When can we expect Zealandism videos? A couple days, the channel will start up. Oh, the comms are also class. Yeah, they they really are. Like, they actually really are. So... Here's your summary, just in case you're an uncultured swine that wasn't paying attention this weekend. AFCON knockout started incredibly hot. Angola, Namibia. Now you're like, dude, what a match. I'm like, I know. Because 17 minutes in, 17 minutes in, Angola gets a red card for the goalkeeper handballing the ball outside the box, dude. Now, it was... He denied an obvious goal, so I was okay with the red card. But then Angola scored a swagtastic goal in the 38th minute. Slick through ball through two dudes. Squared it like a sweaty FIFA player. Tap in. Then Namibia got a red card. Angola scored again, and then Angola scored a third time, putting the South African nation into the quarterfinals. Live it. Is there maybe a supporter? This is a meltdown of Dortmund proportions. Yes, they had a 17th minute red card from their opponent and then lost 3 0. Then Nigeria beat Cameroon in perhaps the most predictable match of AFCON so far. Uh, Cameroon just never looked like they were going to win it. You know, they 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 just never looked like they were really in it. They, you know, they, the, 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 probably the funniest thing is they didn't start Onana. Like, Onana did all of that work to get to the Cameroon camp. And started one match.
Like that whole Onana's like, dude, he's sitting there in the airport, like, well, I'm gonna miss my flight. You know, like all the just wind sprinting from his match to AFCON started one match. Yeah, he also had a zero save percentage. His cousin Undoa started the rest of the matches, and he wasn't the reason they lost that game. Nigeria is just better than Cameroon. They've been better than Cameroon, and they're going to the quarterfinals of AFCON. Like, Cameroon's a team that goes into every AFCON hoping it can win it, but they... I don't think it was a reasonable expectation. Cameroon backed its way into the World Cup, then managed to be competitive against, like, Brazil, but they, they were not... Cameroon is not one of the five best teams in Africa right now. Nigeria proved it. Nigeria always has the talent to compete for an AFCON title, so they're there. Next day, this was awesome. I'm sorry, if you didn't watch this match, you really, really, really missed out. Like, you really, I, 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 I need to bring it in to make this point. You really missed out if you didn't watch this match. I get it. It's Equatorial Guinea against Guinea, but if you didn't watch this match, it was awesome because... Equatorial Guinea is that they, they won their group, right? They were the team that blew out Ivory Coast four to nothing in the group stage. And you're like, who is this team? Then they get a red card in the 55th minute. Deserved red card. Dude's cleat literally hit the other player in the chest, right? So that's a red. But then in the 68th minute, there's a penalty. In the 68th, in the 68th minute, there's a penalty. And we were given... One of the most sensational memes. I'm going to see if I can find it. I'm going to see if I can find the video. You guys might have seen the video. I'm going to see if I can find it. Because it's definitely somewhere. All right, this is the penalty. It's Emiliano and Sue. The guy is a fullback. A fullback in the Spanish lower divisions, but he's the star striker for Equatorial Guinea, right? Emiliano and Sue, down a man, nil-nil, here we go, hits the post. Brutal. This kills me. It kills me every time. Every time I'm not ready for it, dude. Every single time. Like, I know it's super dramatic, packed house. Oh, terrible miss. That's the equatorial kidney cup. Surely not, ref. Surely not. That's the equatorial guinea coach just... Wipester, thank you for the two years, dude. I just the cut too. The 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 director knew what he was doing. Brilliant. No notes. Absolutely no notes. And then I'm gonna need uh well that goal definitely um There we go. Oh, yeah, it didn't say goal. Okay. This, you need sound on because Guinea scores to win. Like, dude, right, right at the end of the match, okay? Right at the end of the match, it's been a grind fest. Equatorial Guinea and Guinea to go to the quarterfinal of AFCON. Guinea just had, like, a civil war not too long ago, so you can imagine how dramatic this is for Guinea. But thanks to the sub, you're welcome. The ad at the top. Yeah, Obama thought no one would notice, but it was caught on camera. Dang it. Ob Thanks, Obama. You got to love the ads, dude. Absolutely unhinged. <clears throat> Thanks, Obama. But seriously, this goal, the limbs. The AFCON limbs. Here goes Guinea. That's what it's all about right there. Look at that. The joy and despair. This is why I love...
major international tournaments, bro. This is why I love major international tournaments. It's the joy and despair. It's the joy and despair, you know? It's the, you've got one guy sitting here with his head on the post. He knows Equatorial Guinea just spent the entire second half grinding to not lose. And then in the 98th minute, Guinea has scored a goal to win the whole thing. Just unbridled like passion, enthusiasm, happiness, and sadness. It's so cool. It's so cool. I love it. I'm never going to not love it. Which what it's all about. Guinea's into the quarterfinal. And then, of course, there was a penalty shootout between Congo and Egypt. I'm not showing you all the pens, but you know, what a fabulous, fabulous match. DR Congo and Egypt, of course, without Mo Salah. You get to the penalty shootout. They have the penalty shootout. And I'm gonna see if I can find um I'm gonna see if I can find the video of Kinshasa going up. Okay, I found it. So DR, you're speaking of passion. DR Congo wins, and this is the capital of DR Congo after they beat Egypt. Listen to this. insane you like how loud that is this sounds like some sort of ancient battle is happening like this is sparta that's a win in the round of 16 in afcon dude that's a win in the round of 16 in afcon for dr congo just to get to the quarterfinals brother just to get to the quarterfinals you even imagine what it would look like? Can you imagine what it would look like if they were, they play Guinea too. They could get to the semifinal. DR Congo and Guinea is a pretty wide open quarterfinal. Like either one of those teams getting to the semi is huge. All time national team accomplishment right there. If they happen to pull themselves there. Ocean Williams, thank you for the 29 months. Egyptian goalkeeper jumped to the same corner throughout the shootout all nine times. He missed the decisive pen. Tough luck. I didn't watch. I I didn't watch shootout. I haven't watched it yet. I need to watch it. I was watching NFL, regrettably, you know. But this is a wide open quarter. Dr. Congo and Guinea. The other ones, Nigeria and Angola. Obviously, Angola winning would be a big upset. But they showed a lot of quality against Namibia. They will not have their starting goalkeeper because he got that straight red card. That's probably going to end up mattering a lot. Now, the other thing that happened that day was, of course, Asian Cup kicking off. And that is where we had the you know, Australia boat raced Indonesia. If they didn't, we would have been concerned. Indonesia was the last team in to the uh, knockouts, and they looked like it. So Australia's into the quarterfinal. Former Asian Cup champions, Australia. Then we had Tajikistan in the United Arab Emirates. The UAE scored in the 95th minute to send it to extra time. Tajikistan is the only team at the Asian Cup that's never been to an Asian Cup before. And they had the lead like the entire match until Alhamidi scored. And then, of course, we go to a penalty shootout. All five, brilliant. All five penalties, dimes for Tajikistan. Absolute dimes. Tox, thank you for the prime. I appreciate you, Wolf Kid. Thank you for the two months. Thank you guys for supporting the stream. Aristide Bonds, thank you for the eight months, my dude. Silvetto, thank you for the eight months. Andrew Ahrens, thank you for the tier one. The Finite, thank you so much for the two months. Kirby Glover, thank you for the three months. I appreciate you guys supporting the stream, dude. I'm just so happy for Tajikistan. Like, if you watch the celebration of just the players on the field after that, I mean, this is a team that came into this with no expectations. UAE is actually a very good Asian Cup team. They're usually in the quarters or the semis of the Asian Cup. This is a monster upset for Tajikistan to get to the quarterfinals, and they're probably getting a winnable match. But all of that brings us to today, because today 
was when Asian Cup started to try to reach AFCON levels of, like, what the f*** is going on. Because Iraq and Jordan. Jordan takes a one nothing lead. The guys on Jordan do a celebration where they sit down and pretend to eat off the ground. Then Iraq scores in the 68th minute to tie it at one. And then in the 76th minute, they score again. Iraq, who are the favorites in this game, they are, gener- you know, it, it's close, but they're the better team compared to Jordan ranking. You know, a- Iraq's won the Asian Cup before. They, they always seem to show up at the Asian Cup. They take the lead, and it's this guy, Ayman Hussein, who scores the goal. But Ayman Hussein does the same celebration. He does the same celebration as the Jordanian guy that scored the first goal. And he gets sent off and is given a second yellow card for excessive celebration. Now, I'm I'm not, th- th- this is more nuanced. So this is like the reaction. They're losing their mind here. Because he, so he, he gets sent off Iraq up 2-1 13 minutes ago for excessive celebration. Now, the actual argument is that he did the celebration more than once. So he was taking like a lot of time to do the celebration. Right, he, he goes behind the goal, he does it once, then he comes back on the field and he does it again. So, like, maybe, maybe by the letter of the law, you know? Like, this is the celebration. It's not anything crazy. He does that, and then the ref gives him a second yellow. And, s- dude, like, dude, 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 dude. You can't, you cannot, you can't, you cannot do that. You cannot, you can't. In the knockouts of a major international tournament, you cannot give a second yellow for excessive celebration unless it's so unbelievably obvious that you have to do it to maintain the integrity of the game. Like the guy literally runs into the stand and punch, like punches a fan or something. Like, what did he do before that? The same celebration off the field. So the argument the argument is that he celebrated for too long. That that's like the you know the the like he did the same celebration like two or three times. The dude just scored a goal to take the lead in the knockouts of the Asian Cup. He just scored like maybe the biggest goal of his entire life. Yeah, if he had no yellow card then maybe you give him a yellow, but I've, I'm still sitting here like, dude, you got to understand circumstance, right? Like, like as a ref, I think you have to understand circumstance, right? There's like the, you want to, you want to apply the laws of the game, right? And the law of the game says, well, you can only celebrate for a certain amount of time. Yeah. Well, the goalkeeper can only hang on to the ball for six seconds, but do we enforce that exactly? Right. The point of being a ref in soccer, in football is not to enforce the rules exactly. It's not to enforce the rules exactly. It's to enforce the rules in a way that aid the game. How are we aiding the game? Like, dude just scored the biggest goal of his life. He didn't do an offensive celebration. He didn't antagonize anybody. He celebrated for a long time. He celebrated for a long time. And you're going to give him a second yellow for celebrating for a long time? Said it's not though. Said it's for provoking the fans. Did I watch? He's celebrating with his teammates. So that like Christian Pulisic didn't get a yellow card for running at Mexican fans going after he scored. Okay, so your argument is he's getting the yellow card because he's making fun of Jordan. Is that like, is the argument that he's get, he gets the yellow card because he does the Jordanian celebration of eating food. I mean, that's just something you can't like one, 
Unless he literally runs up to the guy who did it and like points at him and sits down in front of him and imitates the celebration. You don't know that he's not just doing the same celebration. Like that's incredibly presumptive. But like, <laughs> you know, even if he does that, I'm like, okay, can we just like, you know, go talk to the guy, right? If you're the ref, go get him. Go be like, look, if you keep this up, I'm going to give you another yellow. Because you know what that guy would do? Do you know, do you know what that guy would do? He'd stop doing it because it's a knockout match. He doesn't want to get sent off. All you have to do is go up to the guy and be like, yo, let's go. We need to like, but you see the ref come flying out of left field. Just like. Adebayor did not. Adebayor. Oh, yeah. I, I thought you were talking about a booba car at the World Cup. Well, like, if you take off your shirt, that is, like, the one clear rule on all this stuff. You can't take off your shirt. So that was just stupid by Vincent Abuba car at the World Cup when he got us, he got sent off for, for celebrating his goal at the World Cup. But in this instance, I think it is inexcusable for the referee to not go to the guy and talk to him and be like, dude, you're on a yellow. You keep this up, I'm going to give you another yellow. You cannot just walk over and send him off for this. Unless he's doing something heinous, and he's not. And he's not. I don't think he's doing anything heinous. I've watched, I watched the whole thing when I woke up this morning. You guys saw the last you know, piece of the celebration. That's not the whole thing. Certain people were getting mad on Twitter because they're like, they only see the clip of him doing the one celebration, and then it just looks rigged. He did go behind the goal and do the same thing. Game is over, doesn't matter. That is the worst of all of the arguments. Well, I guess that is the worst of all of the arguments. What's the point of any of us if we can't debate what happened in the game? <laughs> What's the point of sports fandom? Does it say Senegal, uh, Senegal, Ivory Coast? Post? No, it says preview. I That match doesn't kick off till two and a half hours from now. Cape Verde and Moritani is going on right now. <laughs> Lord guess I was like, thanks. Yeah, fair. Fair. Nick, thank you for the 37 months, brother. I appreciate you. Swan Queen, thank you for the two months. Thank you for supporting the stream. Nick, that is a long time. Uh, if he's doing the celly twice, that's... I, dude, I, you can't. Can we just, like, please, we need some common sense here, right? We need one of those, like, dudes, like, we, we just need some common sense, right? The, 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 like, the... the <laughs> The point of the game, you know, I don't, I, I don't, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get how we would want that to be a second yellow. I don't get how the game is helped by giving him that second yellow card. I, I don't get it. I get the idea. You know, it's time wasting, antagonizing. I, I, the rules of the game, like, well, if they continue their celebration for too long or, if you know, they intentionally delay the game with the celebration, like, that is open to interpretation. There is no hard set fact there. They're going out of their way to antagonize the crowd. Okay, so we're just giving the entire Argentina team yellow cards after the match against the Netherlands. Or did we exercise some measure of understanding? Like, like, like this is not the first time that somebody has antagonized the other team or the fans. It, it was not you're running running in front of the fans and doing like that that's not like that is <laughs> well that's it's not insanely out of out of the realm of like if you just hate the idea of the guy's sitting down off the field and then comes back on the field and sits down again I just I believe that the referee should have gone to him and been like dude to the middle like one of those big hand motions, like get you, like, come on. Or I'm going to give you like, I'm going to give you another yellow. Like you have to get to the middle. I, it just like, and so what ends up happening and it'd be remiss of me to not point this out is that Iraq totally could have still won this game. Jordan won an unbelievably like insane fashion, 
Jordan scored a goal in the 95th and 97th minute to flip a loss into a win. Iraq felt really hard done by that. Jordan obviously did what it needed to do, put together a predictably insane comeback and put itself into the quarterfinals of the Asian Cup, where, and this is maybe the coolest part of the whole thing, uh, controversy notwithstanding, Jordan and Tajikistan are now playing in the quarterfinals, which is insane. Iraq and UAE, which were the favored teams, that would have been like an interesting quarterfinal. Tajikistan, Jordan's just madness. It's madness. The ref was Iranian? Oh. Was he? I, yeah, I don't want to make a presumptions uh, on one person based off where they're from, but that definitely changes the dynamic a little bit for sure. Oh, he was Iranian. My history brain just flagged that. Iran and Iraq are not best friends. Um, they did fight a massive war against each other. For those that don't, for those that didn't know, it was a terrible war. Um, I think it ended about 20, 25 years ago. So, I mean, it's not like, it's more they just don't like each other. It'd be, it, it, it would be like a more intense version of like there being a Mexican ref for a U.S. round of 16 match at the World Cup where you're like, You know, where you're like, hmm, huh. Yeah, his nationality should not matter. And I don't know the guy individually, but it's one of those things where you're just like, optically, it doesn't help. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, ah, ah, why couldn't he just be from literally anywhere else? You know, like that, that doesn't help. I like... I just wish, I don't care where he's from. I wish he hadn't given the second yellow, you know? I just wish he hadn't given the second yellow. Yeah, the Iraq-Iran war, I won't pretend to be the person that knows the most about it. It was not fun. The numbers of people that died relative to the population of those two countries, high. Very high. Kind of a pointless war, too. So just very, you know, woo, one of those real good times in uh, human history. But, I mean, they moved past it to the point where FIFA looks at it and is like, we can have a, an Iranian ref for an Iraqi knockout match. But that's just tough. I feel really bad for Iraq. Regardless of where the ref is from, I feel very bad for Iraq. I feel like they were very hard done by the application of that rule. And um, I, but at the same time, you know, I love underdogs. And so Jordan going through is also fun because Jordan just doesn't really get to play in the quarterfinals that much. Tajikistan's never even been to the tournament before and they're in the quarterfinal. So I'm, I'm, I'm fully on board with Tajikistan to the semifinals. Uh, that, yeah, they'll, they'll lose at that point because they'll be playing Australia, Saudi Arabia, or South Korea. But Tajikistan to the semifinals, it's on. Caper to Mauritania is at halftime, and it looks like Qatar is going to win. They're playing Palestine right now. Palestine took an early lead, but Qatar has pulled it back. The reigning Asian champions looking to get to the quarterfinal unless there is some late drama from Palestine. Australia's looking at the draw like, yo. Yeah, but Australia also got Indonesia in the round of 16, so like, they got a bit of a respite, and then they had to jump, you know, then they've got to jump into Saudi Arabia, South Korea. Now, if I was Saudi Arabia or South Korea, I'd be sitting there like, bruh, step bro. Step bro. What are you doing? <sighs> yeah, English people can referee, referee Wales games is not an apt comparison. Neither was Mexico in the U.S., so we had a war, but it was in the 1840s, right? Like, there, there, you know, there's no living memory of that. The manager of the Tajiks is Croatian. Yeah, I actually kind of, I think I recognize him. I was watching the match. He's got, like, the long hair kind of bald on the top. He looked really recognizable. Mobs, thank you for the four months. 
So that's that's your Asian Cup Afcon summary. What happened? Uh, what happened to this weekend that I missed? Because I was watching NFL Asian Cup and um, Afcon. I saw Maidstone got through. I saw the video of the guy rolling down the front, <laughs> rolling off the, the 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 whatever you know. I saw the video of the guy just rolling off the thing for Maidstone. I'm yeah. You see, what I did I see West Brom Wolves? Did that get delayed? I saw a little thing about uh, that got delayed, didn't it? Beating each other up? Ah, oh, yeah. Bunch of grown men acting like five-year-olds. Uh, no, nothing will ever bother me more than like, you know, I'm a tough guy. Let me go punch this other guy because my, cause my team... Newport gave it a college try against United. Yes. Very happy for Anthony. Finally getting off the schneid. He couldn't have done it in a funnier way, dude. Anthony could not have Anthony could not have scored his first goal in a funnier way than he did. His first goal being against a team in League Two. You can't write better than fiction. You can't write that script. You cannot write that script. Xavi announced he's quitting. Yep. Yeah. I mean, you might, you might as well join the party. Uh, Xavi basically just said, yeah, there's too much uh, there's too much pressure on the managerial position at Barcelona. I don't disagree with him. Um, I, I, I'm i surprised because I always figured Xavi was just going to be there for a very, very long time. But I guess he's just not going to be there for a very, very long time, though. <laughs> yeah, because that's the joke. Like, obviously, Anthony, dude was at the World Cup in the Brazil squad. He has talent. But the poor, like, I, I don't want to say the poor guy charges pending and all that, but like, he he he'd really been struggling and then of course he shows up against Newport scores a tap in like I could have scored the goal that he scored I would back myself to be able to direct that ball into the back of the net after it hits the post like I would have scored that and then just drops to his knees I'm like who are you praying to thank you God for finally giving me a goal I could score I guess that would make sense Wait, he shush the crowd, dude. Shut up. Now nah, you score a tap in like that. The only I I'm usually I'm very against policing celebrations, but if you score a tap in like that, the only appropriate celebration is laughing and high fiving your teammates. That's the appropriate celebration for that. It hit the post and fell to you. Like, what are you what are you doing? What are you what are you doing? It's like when Hoyland shush San Marino. But, like, I get that. Like, if you do a good amount to score the goal, especially when they're, like, bothering you, you know, then sure. But you score a tap in, and then you, like, praying, and you, like, shush the crowd. You're like, oh, dude. I didn't see the shush, though. I just saw him drop to his knees, close his eyes, point to the sky. I'm like, oh, all right. Catania drew against Monopoly. I actually didn't know. Uh, Carl texted me. That Catania was winning against Monopoly. And of course, even in real life, Catania bottles against Monopoly. Just tragic. <sighs> the fans were saying crazy things. Yeah, they really do, honestly. Like, having been to two non league English matches, not that Newport's non league, but, you know, like lower league English matches, they really just, they're just saying anything. Like, if you said that, you know, in the United States, you have some wild stuff. But if you said that, like, in, in a U.S. sporting event, you, everybody would be like, the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> Did I win the league? No, we have to try and do that today, actually. We have six matches left. One of them is against Mets. We are a point ahead of Mets. We also have a match in hand. So if we can win this one, then we're we're more comfortable. But this is actually a very tight league race. Anthony prayed to God, but I pray to Zealandism. Hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah, brother. Oh, dude. I hope this isn't nervous. Like, I hope that we aren't about to have a nervous run in at the end of the season. I'm going to go with Jacques Ecomier. Mika Faye, Jacques Ecomier. Uh, where's Scales? I need Scales. My boy, Bravo, Vanden Bauman. Um, where's the... Um, 
the other guy. Alvaro Rodriguez. There he is. Okay, who who do I feel like I'm missing right here? Uh, shelter ups there, but we you know, where's Toure? Is he hurt? He's definitely hurt. Yeah. Four days to two weeks for Saidu Toure, and that means that we are going with Mamadou Zane. Errol Shimshir, you're out. Um, Lorenzo Sage. Lala Mello Bad Boy. Alain Diallo. Actually, no, we need Maxim Rodier. Okay. That's the best team we can get together. Stefan is the starting goalkeeper because we've just scrambled our goalkeeping department together. Uh, Ayman Bututau. Yeah, whatever his name is, you gotta just look for the guy with the Scrabble board on the back of his jersey. You gotta let you, you gotta let that guy drop without getting close to him. You'll be fine. Julio, thank you so much for the five months, dude. Hello. What's up? Magician, thank you so much for the two months. I appreciate you supporting the channel. Thanks for doing it. For the tier one sub. Enjoy the bacon, enjoy the emotes. Bad boy is a good looking lad. Not objectifying or anything. No, we wouldn't want to do that. He's an absolute smoke, but we wouldn't, you know, we, uh, but respectfully. All right, six matches left, dude. Six matches left. A win here would go a very long way to making us comfortable at the top of the league. We have to win the league. There is no exception. That is our only expectation to win the league here today on this stream that is it that's what we play for which team are we we're saying that at the end we're in season five of a journey man where we have uh we started with no playing experience no coaching badges and we have become the the leader of you know we won the african champions league with orlando pirates won the league with knock last season to get them back to the era of izzy and now we uh, took over at St. Etienne because they're paying us over $600,000 a year to manage this team and get them back up. Yo, Alvaro! Oh, Branco! But with the amount of money we've been allowed to spend, there is no excuse for failing to win the league. We, we have to win the league. It is the only expectation. Branko Vandenbaumen. That was a perfect ball. Actually perfect. Oh, FCON. Well, we're uh, third time's a charm. Yes. Fourth time's a charm. Let's keep crossing it in there. Or not. Or yes. Branko Vandenbaumen. Shelled her up. Goal! That was on. That was on. He was on. He was very on. That went right off Rodriguez and in. He's on. Thank you very much. Take it and leave. Easy does it. Luke, thank you for the seven months. Dude, I appreciate you. Shelter up, Alvaro. Eighth goal of the year for Alvaro Rodriguez. Has not been his best year. That's what we need. Australia. Well, I mean, you've already got New Zealand covered, so I suppose I get it. Dude, thank you. It's like we had three people with a shot at intercepting that pass. Mamadou Zane. Mamadou Zane, all righty. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody? Anybody at all? No. No shot. He made that pass. He was off, but that was almost unbelievably disgusting for Max Cruz. Wow. Yo. 
Yo. Forgot to eat my muffin for breakfast. So I'm going to do that while they sort this offside call. Full time, Qatar wins. Qatar to the quarterfinal over Palestine. Great run by Palestine. First ever knockout appearance. But uh, yeah, so it's 2 1. Qatar with the come from behind win. And the reigning Asian Cup champions have still not been knocked off the throne. Who do they play in the next round? I just unpinned it. Why would I do that? Who does Qatar play in the next round? They play the winner of Uzbekistan in Thailand. Either the White Wolves or the War Elephants. I mean, like, there's no loser there. Either team. I'm so down for either team. Yeah, I know, Flux. That's what I was on the lookout for. Like the Iraq 2007 Asian Cup win. Or Pal I mean, Palestine's not as good as Iraq, though. So, like, making the knockouts was their run. You know, making it to the tournament, getting to the knockouts for the first time, that was their run. That'll, it'll be a good quarterfinal. I mean, let's be honest. All the quarterfinals at these tournaments... AFCON and Asian Cup are going to be great and chaotic. No shot we let him get that pass off. Nice save, Zach. Tinsy, thank you for the 18 months, dude. Congrats on your second Twitch child. Enjoy the bacon. Enjoy the emotes. Thanks for the prime. That is a really nice save by Zach Steffen because he caught all of that. Zach Steffen's all over it right now. He's making a couple of saves, and we do not look great, even though we have the goal. Well, it's been the story of the season. We have not held on to leads particularly well. Probably because we're passing to nobody, but that's just like a theory. Uh, yeah. Come on, dude. Like... We're getting dominated right now. We're getting dominated. All right, we're going to try and get a little more control over the game. We already know they missed that. We're going to lower the tempo, do some time wasting, lessen our closing down so we're not dragged out of position as much. And we're also going to uh, put our wings on support and put FCON on attack. Because uh, they, sh they should, they quite simply, they should have a goal and we're lucky to be in the lead. So we need to make the most of that luck and um, settle this game down a little bit. They're breaking out of any pressure we're putting on with ease. They're getting overloads on the outside. Unacceptable defensive performance from the lads out there today. Oh, Branko Vanden Bauman. Shelled her up. Shelly. I don't deserve it. We don't deserve the 2 0 lead. What is happening here? We don't deserve it. Why do we have it? It's so undeserved. Shelled her up. That's actually a really nice shot by Shelly. That's a really good hit. That, uh, this is certainly not down to tactics. This is all we just signed better players. And shelled her up, dropping a dime. We've regained a bit of control, which is nice. A uh, third goal would be truly absurd, considering the way this match has gone. Wow, Epcon about to win a foot race. Look at that. Old man still got... Still got moves. 
All right, where are we going, Bravo? Uh, yeah, it was a real nice goal. I, I, I thought it was more on the goalkeeper than it actually was when I first saw it. Ecomier. Nice, Branko. Oh, my goodness. Why are you shooting with your left? What? You're right-footed, dude. You know what they'll never expect? I'm going to shoot this with my left. Oh, that was gorgeous from FCON, though. Very well worked in by Ecomier. Caught them completely out of position. Yeah, this is an undeserved 2-0. If I was their coach, I'd be furious. But Shelley made a nice individual play. Get us that second goal. Tactical adjustments seem to have actually helped. Those overloads on the outside were murderous to us. We've won the next three momentum graphs after that shift. Corville, thank you for the 17 months. Arsenal looking bad. Wait, are they playing right now? Is there more FA Cup going on? No. Who are they playing? What are, what are they playing? In? What competition do I not have saved? You know? Steven's been good. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, we signed three new goalkeepers, so the writing was on the wall. <laughs> Zach Stephanie has stepped up his game. Sometimes really just depends how invested I want to be in it, but it's probably a good idea to always have one as long as your club isn't like in a bad financial position because it's an ever, another staff member that you can get that has talent to give you, you know, to take over one of your backroom advice positions. Um, they at very least they give you, they can give you like reports of the players out on loan. You don't have to put them in charge of, like, handling who goes on loan where. But, you know, if you're doing a save where you're just going to a club for a year or two, you know, you're Jose Mourinho-ing it instead of pepping it, then, you know, you just want somebody to make sure that you handle the club's loan business without actually having you wanting to micromanage it yourself, then, yeah, loan manager is the person for you. All right, what are we thinking? Subs, FCON's only in a 6.8, but I did witness him with my own eyes make a really good play earlier, so. True story. Uh, Pedro Bravo off for Mario Martin. FCON out for Alain Diallo. This might as well everybody else having a better match, even though FCON should have an assist. He deserves an assist for that pass he played earlier. Alvaro, what is Oh, he got fouled, and now he's... Okay. No, he was offside, and he's hurt. Science. Liam Scales, the Irish Maldini. I mean, position-wise, yeah. <laughs> I'll have it! All right. There are, like, six matches left. We have a four-point advantage as long as we win our match in hand. Like, this is um, it's a very huge result. All we got to do is hang on to it. There we go. Well, I'm a bad boy to see out the last few minutes. A Barranco Vanden Bowman. Here comes the Boom. <sighs> oh, yeah, we're finishing the season this stream, dude. Oh, 100%. We're finishing the stream. We might be getting a new job this stream, you know? We will uh, We will see what opportunities perhaps present themselves. Now that we have uh, a reputation here in, in France as well, and we'll have a Continental A license. 
Ah, Liam Scales doing the whole, I'm not going to defend the guy behind me, but I'm also not going to go far enough forward to close the space down. I'm defending nobody. Genius. Nobody will ever, nobody will ever see that coming. There you go. No late nonsense here. Just make this our highlight. That's a nice pass by Ruo. Vanden Bauman. Underlap it one more time. Oh, it was there too. Come to Brazil, I would if they stopped rejecting my job offers. They keep rejecting the job offers. Oh, Branko. You don't have the space for that type of touch, dude. Let's go, baby. Fernie, thank you for the 15 months. Fernie, you're great. Thank you for seeing Jam and Rich Steele. Thank you for the 16 months. We just spent $10 of Jeff Bezos' money, which is awesome. Thanks for supporting the stream. No yacht for Jeffy B. Not today. Not on my watch. Yeah, that was a, that was, I wouldn't say that was a shaky 2 0 win. But all that really matters at this point in the season is it is a 2 0 win. And five matches left. We are four points clear at the top of the league. Just get through those last couple of road matches. That was a bad team, too. We, we, we did not play up to the level that we should be playing up to in that match. But it was April Fool's Day, and we were shacked in a fool. So I applied for Indonesia today. They said I wasn't suitable. I'm the manager of Liverpool. Today I learned Indonesia hates success. It's true. Ask any of the Indonesian fans that DM me. Huh. I wasn't saying that is a bad thing. The Indonesian fans that DM me are constantly complaining about how bad their national team is compared to their passion for the game. But they did make the knockouts at the Asian Cup. They did make the knockouts at the Asian Cup. Please say it's Saint that uh, stay at Saint Etienne. I think there is a better chance of me staying at Saint Etienne than there was of me staying at Nock Breda last year. Because there's a lot of money. There's a lot of money in this team. <laughs> I'm getting a huge wage, and I'm about to elevate to a level where I think that I need a Continental Pro license to be able to coach teams that would be significantly better than Saint Etienne. All right, that dude's very upset because one of the goalkeepers I loaned in is not playing. Totally understandable, dude, because he's he's not playing at all. Thank you. <laughs> Caprese boy, thank you for the two months. <laughs> Fraser White, thank you for the three months. Got my one sneeze of the day out of the way. Was there anything else that happened over the weekend that I missed? I know we kind of touched on it. Somebody said something about AC Milan. I saw Pulisic had an assist to equalize, but I don't know. I actually, I, dude, I really, I haven't looked at the Serie A table in a hot sec. Mons is having a good year. Mons will be having a good year. Milan missed two pens ah! <laughs> against Bologna. Oh, they've got they have Joshua Xerxes on Bologna. That is, yeah, that's Joshua Xerxes. God, that what an FM wonder kid. Olivier Giroud missed, and Teo Hernandez missed, and then they gave up a ninety-second minute penalty equalizer. It's because they stopped Polisikov in the eighty-seventh minute. That's what happened. Well, that turns it basically into a two-horse race at that point. I mean, 
Enter's really building a, you're building up a little dynasty over there. Zer you said Xerxes been really good this year? They, I mean, I look, I have not watched Bologna all year. Obviously, I didn't even know Xerxes was there. So if he is, maybe he's finally coming good. No, I, we, we talked about Anthony against Newport County. Oh, yeah, your, your FA Cup drama. Do, 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 do. The guy that, wait, was that actually serious? The guy that got subbed on for Polisics, the guy that conceded the pen? That I mean, I wasn't kidding. It's because they they brought Polisic off in the 87th minute. That's why. That's why. It is going to get the Champions League spots, you know, and they're very well in that, so it's fine. There's a, the, the clear top three in Italy this year. Bayer Leverkusen still hasn't lost, but they did draw. I saw that this weekend. Bayer Leverkusen dropped a draw, which means Bayern's like two points behind them now. But Leverkusen still hasn't lost all year, which is crazy. Uh, Girona. Okay. So Girona, I am still, I'm torn on how I feel about it because Girona is part of the city group. If you're wondering like, who's Girona? Why is he talking about Girona? Somebody brought him up in the chat. Um, they're a top of the Liga, or at least they have been. Yeah, they still are. Um, Real Madrid has a match in hand though. Girona is part of city group, but they still are like, they're, you know, I get being part of city group, like. New York City FC is part of Citigroup. That doesn't mean that they could win La Liga. Right, like, just because you're part of Citigroup doesn't guarantee the, that kind of success. And it's still like an underdog story, but being part of Citigroup makes it like less of an underdog story. But it still is. I mean, they're obviously spending a lot less money than the teams that they're competing against. They're a smaller club than the teams they're competing against, even if that club has, you know, somewhere in the background of its business operations, very deep pockets. So I'm sure their training facilities are great and their coaches are well paid. But yeah, it, it makes it harder to root for them 100%. But it doesn't mean it's not like an underdog story. Uh, but but as somebody that passionately roots for the underdog, I have found it like a divisive top. It's definitely cool. I will say regardless, it is cool. And I love having new teams pop up in the top of a league. Right? I, 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 I love having new teams become involved in the top of a league. I will never have an issue with that. Yeah, it's, they've been under city ownership since uh, 2017, and they just got to La Liga like this year. So, I mean, they were in the second division last year, right? It was last year or two years ago. There's surely no way for me to look up that. Well, that's the town, so. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, they finished 10th last year. Okay, so this is their, um, this is their second season, top flight. So they, they got promoted, finished 10th last year, and now they're literally in first, which is crazy. So, yeah, it's not like being in Citigroup was just the Garrett. Like it, it is a great underdog story. If they were owned by some random rich dude that wasn't Citigroup, then you – because Citigroup is just so wealthy, right, that you're like, oh, of course they're good. I'm emotionally confused about whether I should like them or not. Everything coming up. Millhouse, thank you for the seven months. Wow. Appreciate it, dude. Thoughts of Polisic being the LeBron James of soccer. Polisic's always been really good. The problem is Chelsea. Telling me City Group money is powerful enough to beat the big three in Spain. It is, though. I mean, the big three in Spain are owned by the fans. You know, like they're owned by the. I, don't know, I, I won't be able to describe the exact setup to you, but, you know, there is no, like, I'm the owner of Barcelona, right? There is no, I'm the owner of Real Madrid. There's a president that's elected by the fans, but, like, they're still socios. Thank you. I, I couldn't remember the word. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, sit. So if Manchester City was in Spain, they'd be doing the same thing that they are now.
Nice, Henry. Thank you for the eight months. When you, I mean, that that's awesome. I highly encourage people exploring the wide world of football manager like that. Three little dots. Thank you for the 19 months. Oh. Thoughts on college Greek life. I have my first rush event tonight. Relax and have fun. Ru rush in particular is freaking awesome. Just relax. Soak it all in. Don't put too much pressure on it. I definitely did. Most people that do the rush stuff, put, you put way too much. Relax. Have fun. Go where you want to. Don't force yourself to do something. Like, oh, I got to go to this house, too, because that's where, you know. Like, relax. Don't take it too seriously. Just be, you know, be conversational. That, like, think about it from the perspective of the people that are, like, doing the rushing. I was in Greek life uh, at the University of Virginia uh, fraternity. Um, I, I, I enjoyed it. I, I, it was fun. Rush was awesome. Um, ru, ru, if you're a dude, Rush is great. Let me, let me put it that way. If you're rushing sororities, it sucks. Ru, sorority Rush is terrible. But if you're a guy, then Rush is fun. Rushing fraternities is, is a really good time. Yeah, but I, I think... What what would have helped me is imagine Rush from the brother's perspective. They're just looking for people they'd want to hang out with, right? So don't try and pretend to be something you're not. Just be conversational. Just have a good time. Be a nice be a be a nice guy, and uh, you, you'll probably have a great time. You know, make sure, especially in the early rounds, you got the first night. Try and go to a lot of places so you at least have a feel for where you might want to go. Um. Yeah, but uh, like actual thoughts on Greek life, it's kind of pointless. It would probably be obsolete in like fifteen to twenty years. But I, I like I had a I, I had a good time. Yeah. What's this rush business? So you, if you guys like, if you're not from the United States, do you know what a fraternity is? Like, if if you want, this would basically be coming from consuming like American media, like a college fraternity you've got like the greek letters out front it's basically just like dudes in boating shoes yeah kind of sort of more or less yeah it's basically like a, a a brotherhood of guys right and every year there's a rush there, every year there's a rush which is where all of the young students that just got to college are they basically they don't audition but like you have rounds of rush where they visit the house and you have different events. Like I'm trying to, one of our first round events was like a North versus South keg race, right? Where you'd have two beer kegs in the front yard and you take all the people from North of Virginia and put them on one side and all the people from South of Virginia and put them on the other side. And the first one to finish the keg all got free beer. There was like a third keg that they got to drink from for free. But the point is to get to know each other and hang out and have a good time and be stupid college students so, like, ru Rush for guys is just typically fun stuff like that. It could be, you know, like, you, 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 we we go to an ice skating rink and play hockey, like, was one of the Rush events. Um, that was, like, later rounds when the fraternities start to spend more money to court the people that they like. Uh, we would go, we, we went and played hockey, which was a lot of fun. Um, trying to remember what else we did. We had, like, a concert that we would, like, host. Um, to, wow, it's amazing how fast you forget this stuff because these used to be like, you know. What people do fraternities want? I mean, each fraternity has its own vibe. The real point is, you know, you, ru you rush a bunch of different fraternities and then you get invited to the next round at certain fraternities and you decide kind of which one you want to go to the most. And then it just like naturally narrows itself down, yeah. Mauritania just subbed an AK-47. But, yeah, I mean, Greek life, I liked it. Um, it definitely can also be terrible. So, you know, try to avoid. This came from a question. Somebody, J. Crab subbed, has been subbed for 30 months and has their first rush event tonight. So that's what I was trying to offer, trying to think of any advice that I had.
Yeah, and the same fraternity can have different reputations at different schools. Yes, it's entirely dependent on the school. It's it's weird. It's all it's all weird. All right, so Tere. Yeah, fraternities and sororities are. I would say almost every college in the United States has Greek life fraternities and sororities. Uh, sororities, yeah. Um. In Europe, we go to classes and just make friends there, um, which makes sense. But like the whole, <laughs> I like I I don't know. A uh, U.S. college just has a the, it, it, this kind of different mystique in this perception of like what it should be, you know. Where's um? I need another sub. Luca Dane. Uh. All right, where you go. So we have Ecomie, we have Scales, we have Ruol, we have Ramsey, because we got a bit of an injury to Mika Faye, but he's rehabbing and will be back tomorrow. Um, Bravo, Van den Bauman, Mamadou Zane, Lorenzo Sage, um, and Shelter Up. Who's Fcon? I don't have Diallo or Fcon. I need one of them. I'm going to have to drop Bad Boy for Elaine Diallo. I don't love my bench today, so hopefully we get it right the first time. <laughs> Hopefully we get it right the first time, dude. What does Greek life mean? No, I mean it's not ma it's not masculine oriented at all. Sororities are honestly usually the noisier of the bunch. Um great I for some reason the fraternities have Greek letters as their names. So like Sigma Chi, um, Delta, Delta, Delta. Um you know. Kappa Sigma, like that. The 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 fraternities and sororities have Greek lettered names. I have no idea why. I don't understand the history of it. I don't really know. I did it. Um, I actually, weirdly enough, uh, one of my old fraternity brothers was in the city last night, so we got a we got a beer together. But yeah, it was fun. It was just it was it was fun. It was like most. It was dumb college stuff, but it was fun. They're all yeah, they're also professional frats and sororities, like they're only little, like trade fraternities and sororities kind of kind of like that vibe. Oh. American students are generally much further away than European students from where they are from. So the social aspect developed differently in many American students from rural areas. Yeah. I would say the size of the US and the fact that colleges are very like I grew up in Florida and went to college in Virginia. I went to the University of Virginia, for those that don't know their Zealand lore. Uh, and in Charlottesville, Virginia, which is about 14 hours away by car from where I was born and raised. So you didn't, like, go home much. You know, I would go home for, like, Christmas, Thanksgiving, um, you know, like, summer break, obviously. That was basically it, though. Oh, nice pass, Alvaro. Oh, what a dime. Shelly. Ecomier. Alvaro, nice save. That was really well worked, though. Love that from us. Thank you so much for reminding me of Ambrose Burnside, dude. Thank you so much. Slar, I really appreciate it. The vibology on the watch out. So this is the American Civil War, obviously. No really, re no reason really to care about it outside of the United States. So if you don't know anything about it, that's totally fine. Union versus the Confederacy, right? This was a Union general, Ambrose Burnside. Um, understandably, his last name is where the word sideburns comes from. But what we're really focusing on here is something I like to call the infinity forehead. Just an absolute menace to society, Ambrose Burnside. Um, yeah, absolute menace to society. But he keeps that chin clean. He keeps that forehead clean. Uh, the infinity pool of foreheads, it just goes on forever. I, I will never be able to top this. 
Are you related? Yeah. Snooky, thank you for the prime. <laughs> no, we, you know, our, our family's really deteriorated over the years, but this is Union General, one of the major generals in the Civil War, Ambrose Burnside. Just ferocious. Absolutely ferocious. In his dress uniform with the infinity forehead. He was not nearly the worst general the Union had. Burnside actually got better over the course of the war. He wasn't great, but he did. He got better over the course of the war. Uh, Ramsey! Ah. Looked like a dog of a center back, though. Yeah, you should have seen that dude cleaning out opposition strikers. McClellan was the worst general. But yeah, McClellan was well, the head general of the Union for a little while. And I can't remember who said it. I think it was um, Sherman, the famous Union general that like burned the South to the ground. Uh, Sherman said about, I think it was Sherman, but I'm not sure. So don't quote me on that. But the quote's accurate. If McClellan had a million men, he'd swear the enemy had two million and he'd wait for two million more. Which I thought was... <laughs> Like, if you ever needed a quote to just inspire you to take action, that quote always that quote always did it for me. Oh, a die! Don't punish me, man. He was on, wasn't he? D. Sherman, 42 Wallaby Way, same Sherman. Uh, yes. This isn't Sage game. Oh, but he's doing it well. Oh, but he did it so well. We need it. We need a good response here. So plenty of time. We need a good response. Why are they called sideburns if he's called Burnside? Yeah, I actually used to know the answer to that, but it is off his name. They just like the troops just flipped it. Like old sideburn. They're like. I, I, I there were, there is like actually a story behind that because it, it's something ha like where they flipped his last name to describe that piece of hair. Oh, okay, it wasn't a bad first half, but we're not showing a lot of creativity. I'm gonna go into attacking. We're gonna restrict their space in the second half because I don't think they're actually very good. Lorenzo side just gonna get further up the field. Uh, we're not gonna raise the tempo yet, but we are gonna raise the back line. Go get stuck in. Prevent short goalkeeper distribution and kind of go nuts here. The title, dude, the, the, the league to a title is like on the line right now. This is where we clutch up. This is where we clutch up and win. Sane. Mamadou Sane, come on! Dude, don't go down. Fight for the ball. It also would have been on the beat drop. That would have been sick. <laughs> Side's just been great today. He's opening up so much with his touch and turn. Mamadou Zane, it was a good run last time. That was really not good. Oh, nice work. I spoke too soon. I just assumed Raul was going to get that ball. Oh, Bravo surely got that. Can eat that man for breakfast. Lorenzo Saiz, best touch in the league. That pressure does not get to him. He's Lorenzo Saiz. Mamadou Zane. It's Alvaro Rodriguez. Come on. Come on. 
Oh! Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. We're there, we're there, we're there. Good composure right in front of you, good. Oh, turn into the space. Turn, take it. Sane, yes. Sage, yes. Got Sane, you got the, nope, it's not there anymore. All right. Good, way to be patient. Oh, okay. This is fine. Go to Bravo, into Sige. Oh, that was way more complicated than it needed to be. But maybe! We look good. We're awake. Team talk worked. Adjustments have worked. We, we need to make it work with a goal, though. We're alive. We're awake. Nice block. Way to fight to get in front of him. Oh, wow. Okay. That's why you shouldn't try to take people for pace, Sige. It's not your game. This is our moment right here. We're ready. Zane. Oh, that was almost perfect. Oh, shelter up! That was blocked. It doesn't look blocked at all. All right. Uh, guess on for Alvaro Rodriguez would take this opportunity. Maxime uh, Rodier. Yes, sir. Scales is on a 6.5 right now, but come on now. Maxime Rodier, Evan Gasson. Go get him, Tiger. Oh, Dominant, thank you for the seven months. Thank you so much for supporting the stream, dude. Oh, Kyo! Maxime Rodier with a Rabona. Oh, come on. Fresh into the match, it's Maxime Rodier, the Academy product with a Rabona to Lorenzo side. Unbelievable in a title race to level the score. Oh, give me that. Let's go. Going for the win now. Ramsey. That's fine. Doing a good job of taking that away. All right, Branko. Yes, inside it now. We're inside their formation. If long as we don't take a terrible touch, we'll be fine. Oh, wait, but we... Oh, Ramsey. Oh, what a play by Ramsey. Looking for Rodier. I need a defender, so I'm going to go Mario Martin. We can't leave two tired midfielders out there. Mamadou Zane has been having a good game. I'm going to leave him out there. But Martin and uh, Luca Dane, who's got that magic wand of a left foot, even though he's retiring at the end of the year, maybe he can drop a ball for us. Martin, 
Mario Martin. We have one sub left. We could go Alain Diallo. Come on now. Come on now. All right, their, their left back is out of it. Alain Diallo, you're coming in to play right wing. Cut inside with the ball. There you go. Cut inside with the ball. He's not good at crossing. We want him to pick the ball up and cut inside. Come on. You work it up the side. That's good. Rodier, we've got the overlap coming from Dane. Lorenzo Sage, who's had a good game. Love the pass. Diallo. Come on, that guy's tired. Diallo, I know you can take him. Their left back is exhausted. You've got to be able to take him, Diallo. Franco. Oh, what a pass! Rodier! It's Maxime Rodier for St. Etienne. And what an emergence off the bench for the 18 year old. Wow. Wow. Holy smokes. What a bench appearance from Maxime Rodier. He is a dog. What a bench appearance from Maxime Rodier. The Rabona assist. Branco gives him a one touch lofted ball, chests it perfectly. Wow. That could be a league winning type play there. Oh, put it away. <sighs> Just rode it again, dude. It was Rodier again. That's ours. Franco, nice turn. Alain Diallo, it's open. It's Gesson, he's probably off. And he missed it anyways. Yo, penalty. <laughs> the freaking jump scare. Did you just say penalty to Cape Bird? Cape Bird got a pen. Referee Mohamed Abdel is blown for a foul. It's a penalty, Cape Verde. Oh, my goodness. Cape Verde, the smallest nation in AFCON with a penalty to get to the quarterfinal. Jamie, thank you for the eight months. Yeah, that, that was actually an unreal jump scare, <laughs> just dropping you on Ambrose Burns' side like that. So Baba Carniasse of Mauritania has received a yellow card. I love Mauritania's national team. Super proud of them. Uh, a decade ago, Mauritania was outside the top. Oh, he scored it! They were outside the top 200 in the world. Now they're in the AFCON knockouts. But it's Cape Verde in the lead. Ryan Mendez. 89th minute. Cape Verde. Jose Munch, I had a little chocolate muffin. Cape Verde leads over Mauritania. What a run. What a turnaround for the national team of Mauritania. They won their first ever AFCON match. They made it to the knockouts for the first time ever, but it's Cape Verde, the smallest country in the tournament that looks set for the quarterfinal, the island nation. I think Cape Verde will qualify for the World Cup. They have a chance. Africa has nine spots now, dude. Well, let's, I mean, look, Africa... World Cup qualifying. I don't know what Cape Ver uh, Cape Verde's group is, but you have to like win your group. So the group draw is actually very, very important. Um,
Uh, they're in the same group as Cameroon. Honestly? Honestly? Yeah, I would say they have... I would say they have a chance. I would say they have a chance. Because... I mean, Cameroon doesn't look fantastic. I think Cape Verde might be able to do that. If that they're, they're the pot two team, clearly. And in Ca Cameroon is their pot one team. I think they've got a shot at it. Especially, they're going to get farther than Cameroon in this tournament. <laughs> Cameroon just got knocked out, dude. So Cape Verde trying to hold on to a 1-0 lead. Ooh. Big match from Lorenzo Sage today also. Very big match from Lorenzo Sage today. Casual Screamer, thank you for the prime. Thank you for the eight months. Oh, are there more than 200 national teams? That's more than there are countries. Uh, yes. Goal! Game, set, match. Evan Gesson. You're watching a cooking stream? Yeah, I know, dude. We are chefing it up right now. <laughs> St. Etienne keep the pressure on against Metz. Big match from Lorenzo Sage. He's repaid our faith that we've been giving him this season. That was, we needed to show a lot of heart there. Down 1-0 most of the match. Maxime Rodier sparks the turnaround. Him and Lorenzo Sage putting in the performances. We might not be done here. We're looking for another one. It's Sage. Oh. Ivan Alves scored. Yeah, they came for wishes they have that guy. Teddy, thank you, dude, for supporting the stream for 35 months. Anthony, Anthony to score one goal in the next 35 months. Hammer that bet. Absolutely hammer that bet. Oh, they're still hanging on. Cape Verde to the quarters, question mark. Who would they play? Who would Cape Verde play? Like, what's the, uh, what's the sitch? Uh, Morocco, South Africa. That's a very good round of 16 match also. Cape Verde would be playing Morocco or South Africa. Not the easiest draw, you know? Wow, that was just such a monster win. What a performance from the boys. Coming from behind, at home. We lose that. We still have a match against Mets. So, like, if we lose that, Mets wins. We're only a point ahead of them with four matches to go, including a massive six-pointer against the team next to us. We flip that. We have a seven-point advantage with them having a match in hand. They just lost. Like, that. this one day just flipped the whole title race. Now it's ours to lose, dude. Now it is literally ours to lose. If we had lost and they had won, it'd be a one-point race. Now it's a seven-point race. That's incredible. They just lost. Wow. GG's, dude. We just got a win away against Pal. Two more wins in our final four matches, and the league is ours. Two more wins in the final four matches. The league is ours. Thank you, for the, thank you for the 20 months. So hear me out. If you drink invisible ink, can they see your insides on the MRI or not? You know? Diddy, thank you for the four months. I appreciate it. World's smallest violin. Thank you for supporting the uh, the stream. I'm going to go B+. Plus. I'm going B+, plus on that dad joke. It was a good one. It was, it, it was, it was quality. Will use in my personal life. Am I sure I'm leaving if I go to League One? Oh, no, I'm not sure I'm leaving. I don't know if we'd be able to get a better job than managing Saint Etienne in League One, League One next year. I don't know if we'd be able to get a better job than that. So, the whole point is to get to the top as quickly as possible. If we can drop a good season with Saint Etienne next year while getting our Continental Pro license, I think that might be very beneficial. You know, maybe aim for a European finish if we get some extra money to invest in the team this year. We've got some very talented young players that are going to keep growing. Rodier, Diallo, Lorenzo Sage. Is it over? Question mark. Still going, of course. 95th minute. Moritania giving it everything.
Can Mauritania find the equalizer? We're going to Brazil, dude. I, I wish. Is Pau still fighting? Uh, technically, yeah. They're five points out of complete safety, four points out of the playoff spot right now. So they are. They're still alive. They're still in it. Oh, dude, what? We play Mets three days after. That's kind of absurd. So there's no potential left for Elaine Diallo, even though he's only 19 years old. That's wild. Same with uh, Saidu Toure. Yeah, Toure also doesn't have any potential left. Rough out here. Rough. Uh, uh, uh. Promotion hopefuls going for the run in. Uh, who's this? So shall I mean. Uh, so Shao's mathematically eliminated. I think they, they're almost all mathematically eliminated. Nimes Olympique is going to be mathematically eliminated once we win this match. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and Babu. Had a good time to get hurt, dude. What do you think? Full starter li uh, starting lineup against Pau and then... Do we want to, I mean, I don't want to rotate though. I don't want to rotate against Pow and then like lose. And then all of a sudden the Mets match makes things really interesting. Did I just see the name that I thought I saw? Oh no, Adi Hooter. Okay. How does Canada do at the World Cup? Well, Canada's only made the World Cup twice and I don't think they've ever won a match. But Canada is currently sitting on its best ever national team. It finished first in World Cup qualifying from CONCACAF going to the last World Cup. They had a tremendous qualifying campaign, won almost all the matches they played. They were really, really good. They beat the U.S. They beat Mexico. Um, they are going to Copa America, I think. I can't remember. Because Copa America qualifying was very weird. Uh, they're not in the qualif. Okay, so Mexico, U.S., Canada, Costa Rica got the buys. Hell yeah. Now the, um. Oh, yeah, then we beat. Oh, no, Canada got knocked out, actually. Sorry. They're going, they're in, they are in the playoff. Okay, so what happened was there were like, these two groups from CONCACAF. Panama, Trinidad, Tobago, Martinique, Guatemala, Curacao, El Salvador, and then Jamaica, Honduras, Suriname, Cuba, Haiti, Grenada. And if you finish top two in those groups, you got drawn in a quarterfinal against Mexico, the U.S., Canada, or Costa Rica. Panama played Costa Rica and destroyed them because Costa Rica is not good anymore. Jamaica won on away goals against Canada, which was an incredible tie. Great come from behind by Jamaica. I'd forgotten about this come from behind by Jamaica in Canada. So Jamaica's going, Panama's going, Mexico's going, and the U.S. is going. Mexico beat Honduras on penalties to go because they're not good anymore either. Then we beat Trinidad and Tobago 4-2 on aggregate to avenge our failure to make the World Cup. So that sent Panama, Jamaica, U.S., and Mexico to Copa America. And then the other four teams that lost the quarterfinal are going through a playoff. And that happens on uh, March 23rd. Costa Rica versus Honduras, Canada against Trinidad and Tobago. Um, and then I believe the winner of those two matches will go to Copa America. So either Costa Rica or Honduras, either Jamaica or, or either Trinidad and Tobago or Canada. So Canada is not guaranteed yet, but they are the favorite against Trinidad and Tobago to make it to Copa America. But, you know, they've got one playoff match at the Copa America venues to kind of sort that out. tomorrow uh let's not let's just not we got we, we got two matches coming up in four days that will determine a lot of what we've got going on in the league
you know, we if we win these next two matches, we have won the league. If we lose the next two matches, we could be a point away from safety. So, or a point of, you know, they could be within a point of us. So we need to be very on our game. Lorenzo Saige, Mamadou Sane. Where's uh, Saidu Toure? Mamadou Sane was okay last time. He wasn't great. Scales is stepping out for Mika Fai. And then Scales steps up to the bench, and we've got our more normal-looking bench now. Ramsey, Rual, Faye, Jacques de Comier, Bravo, Vandenbaum, and Toure, Side, Shelter up. Uh, Evan Gasson starts over Alvaro Rodriguez, who continues to underwhelm, shall we say. Where's FCON? I want FCON. FCON, Rodier, Martin, Zane, uh, Scales, Alvaro, Moreira. Yeah. Would like to have bad boy on the bench, but he just doesn't fit on the bench here. We are going to go full first team, and then we'll just figure out who's available for the next match against Mets, but I think winning this match is just more important. We, we you know, if we, because the issue is if we lose this match, there's a lot more pressure on the Mets match. You know what I mean? If we lose this match, then the Mets match has a lot more pressure. This is a way against the worst team in the league. If we play our full starting lineup and get three points here, Mets has to be perfect, including beating us in that next match. If we lose this match, then the match against Mets has, like, just massive title importance. We win this match, then beating Mets three days from now wins us league to... <sighs> All right. How do I feel about the higher intermediary feature so far? Uh, do I use it often? More often than I thought I would. I think it's a good feature. Very realistic to the way it works in the uh, real world as well. I think it's a good feature that makes uh, transfers a bit more logical when you're, like, desperate to try and get rid of somebody. Yeah. All right, Lorenzo Saige. Oh, yo, nearly. Let's just uh, not get up to any funny business. Let's make this obvious that we're going to win it early. No funny business. Well, he's off. He's super off. Thank you. Cape Verde are through. Score is final, dude. Cape Verde to the quarterfinals of AFCON with their win over Mauritania. Oh! Congratulations to the smallest nation in AFCON. Just 650,000 people in Cape Verde. And they're all going up in the club tonight. Oh! It's Pedro Bravo for St. Etienne. They need two wins in their last four matches. To guarantee a league title. And they are off and running against Pau, who desperately need anything they can get from this match. Trying to avoid relegation to the third division, the Championnat National. I don't think that's true if we lose to Mets. No, it, it is. Oh, my goodness. Evan Gaston trying to pop all the way off right now. Why, why are you leaving say that at the end? I don't know for sure. Uh, my only, the only reason we would leave, we would leave if we can get a better job. I don't think we can. Blackburn and Wrexham tonight? What are they playing in? Oh, nice. Uh, dude, screw it, Wrexham. I'm all on the Ryan Reynolds train. Him and Rob McElhaney are like living my dream. I, I'm all, sure. Wrexham by a million. Do I have actually any educated prediction to make on the match? No, but wrecks him by a million. Luke, thank you for the three months in advance, dude. Thank you for supporting the stream. I appreciate you. Oh, dude, dude, dude. Give me that. Pelotha, please. Nice, bravo. Branko Vanden Bowman. Jacques Ecomier. Jacques Ecomier. The Gabonese left back. Shelter up. Branco. Bravo! Blues Machine, thank you for the five months. I appreciate you.
Thank you for supporting the stream. Mitrovic. Oh, I, I forgot we had a one nothing lead. That's how invested I am in just playing each moment the same. That was really textbook defense, like, like defensive positioning there. Didn't give him any room to breathe. Oh, sweet. No way, dude. No. I mean, I never saw the ball cross the line there. Just, you know, feel the need to point that out, but. Just uh, get a good team talk in, switch to attacking so we throw ourselves forward a bit more. We have not been dominant in this match. God, say do stay healthy. Please don't actually be hurt. He is actually hurt. Exceptional. Uh... Oh, great step by Rual. Oh, I don't hate that ball. It just kind of ran away from the guy a little bit. If he'd been able to lay that off to like Vandenbaum and we would have been in a really good spot. Loving the way Lorenzo say just playing now. I call me Oh, it's a dime. It's a dime right over the... Cool, cool, cool. We're fine. We are so okay. We are so okay. Uh, all right, guess all. Maybe, maybe not. Sige, Branko. Well, well, nice, Pedro. Oh, cool. Are they both hurt? So I just, I, there's no, where on the screen can I click to see Bravo? Is that not, yeah, he took a knock too. Let's get the two hurt guys off. Well, I want to see is how that guy was able to drift into that spot. Like, what overlap are they sending? 
We got Ramsey, Branko, Rual. We've got why is Mika what 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 the hell? Uh, okay, so it was a run through that drags Mika Faye out. And so this is literally just their right wing because Mika Faye just got dragged out, and he's keeping him on side for this play. All right, we're going to shift into our aggressive um, our aggressive posture again. You know, you know how we do this. Losing 2-1 on the road against the worst team in the league in a title race. They've injured two of our players. <laughs> and they have, uh, you know, it was, oh, that penalty's tough. Wasn't a giant foul, I'll put it that way. We have 30 we have 30 minutes to flip the script there. We've been acting a fool to give them two goals in this game. What's up, Jacob? Try him as an advanced forward. Tired of the target forward game, Alvaro. I want to see what you can do going ahead. All right. Not doing anything great so far. <clears throat> oh, please. Oh, please. Brother man, brother man. Ready, I. Maxime. block by Mario Martin that would have been tricky spot to be defending why are we giving them why why you guys we're chasing the game here Okay, how how are how are they getting match control nonsense going now? Like what what do you what do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> All right, I'm bringing an F gun. Side chestnut on that six point six today. Good. Good. Take it. Take it, Ecomie. Take it. Keep going, Jacques. Guys on your back hip. He's tired. No, no, no. Why are you shooting that also? You could literally have a header at midfield and they would shoot for the goal instead of just flicking it on. Jacques, you just needed to run a little bit more. That dude was behind you. You could have gotten all the way to the end line. Rodier, can I have one header that doesn't look like a balloon that a child just let go? That'd be amazing. Just like one header that has literally any velocity on it at all, guys. That's like the only requirement here. Yo, quick trip, Jesus. Thank you for the five. That's insane. That's, that's, 
insane. Congratulations, dude. Thank you for the five dollars. That's that's nuts. To who? Alvaro? Dear Lord, to himself. I, why didn't I think of that? It was to himself. I don't know. You know, can't believe I didn't see that one coming. Zane. Oh, my goodness. It's good goalkeeping. He took it away. That's good goalkeeping. Well, thank goodness we did well enough earlier in the season that we can stomach that and hopefully still win the league. Because that is a brutal loss on the road against the bottom team in the league. Agitator, thank you for the two months. That is a brutal loss on the road against the worst team in the league who desperately needed it to try and save their season. Um, they, you know, they also injured two of our players, which I've got some choice words about that, but they've knocked out Pedro Bravo and Sedu Torre from the match we have coming up against Mets. Mirabel, thank you for the 21 months, dude. Oh, shoot. Blues, thank you for the five. Wrexham's your team. Oh, that's got to have been fun ride. Probably been a very fun time. How's our, um, yeah, our team go Asians worked its way all the way up to average over the course of the season. What an absolutely brutal loss. Hi. I Van Bronckhorst wants to sign Bravo. I mean, I'm, I'm not interested in that personally. Um, so now we play Mets. And we have a four-point advantage because Mets got back on the horse and they won against Paris FC, uh, which actually puts Paris FC in the relegation zone. And we are, yeah, we're four points clear with three matches left. If we beat Mets, we are seven points clear with two matches left. So we can we can still win the league today. Why are you setting the initial budgets? Did we guarantee promotion or something? Uh, yeah, we did. The results last week guaranteed promotion. So they've given us a wage budget of 75 and a half and a transfer budget of 18 million. Okay, fair. Uh, thank you. So we, we've gained promotion. Nice, chat. Nice. Nice. No, I mean, my goal isn't... My goal wasn't that. Like, it was pretty clear that we were going to get promoted. You know, my goal wasn't promotion. My goal is to win the league. My goal is to win the trophy. So, hopefully that takes some of the pressure off the players now that we know we're going back up to league on. We're very happy about that. But our goal is to win the trophy. Our goal is to bring home a championship at the end of the season. Um, yeah, but that's, you know, we've, I'm not going to get fired, which is good. We've delivered a season that is not going to get us fired, which is always important. Shelter up is suspended for this match as well. All right, Rodier. Showtime. Yeah, it's uh, we've got I've gotten three teams promoted over the course of this save, which is pretty fun, a including Saint Etienne. Here we got Black Leopards up, we got Knockbraid up last season to the Eredivisie. We've gotten Saint Etienne back up to Ligue 1, and we can lock up a league title here. But that is, you know, that's huge, especially early in the season. Automatic promotion it looked very far away. <laughs> it looked very far away, but we got. Very, very hot. Um, you know, we have to win all of our last. You know, we, we have to win all of our last three matches to break the points record for Saint Etienne in a season. But fair enough. 
We will try some encouragement. Uh, no. I would recommend individual ball control training. Uh, no. It's amazing to me how little I was focusing on us getting to the automatic promotion and taking the team back up. Like, I'm so focused on we've got to win the league. We have to win the league. The whole year it's been we have to win the league. Uh, you know, the entire the entire season has been we have to win the league. Even when we after seven or eight matches or whatever, when we were in, like, sixth, it was like, yeah, we've, we've got to find a way to get hot. And uh, win the league. Isn't there a way to see, like, Lee, you know, positions over, um... Yeah, I mean, we were in, what, fourth? On match day 13, we were in fourth. But we've been on top of the table since uh, match day 17, so... This is, our, this is our title to have. All we've got to do is beat Mets. If we're bringing home a trophy, and we will keep our record of winning a trophy every single season. Which African country produces the best talent in the game? Egypt has the highest youth rating in Africa. South Africa has slept on um, West Africa as a whole. Like if you hit Nigeria, Ghana, Mali, Ivory Coast, and you hit like the talent producing areas in those countries, you'll still you'll get a large number of good players overall. <sighs> Isn't it the first time that I didn't need to win the league to get automatic promotion? I actually think that's true. With the Black Leopards, I know we did. We'll take a look at Knock Breda, just see how they're doing. Oh, yeah, get, oh, they're out of the promotion spot right now, but it's going to come down to the last couple matches. Svole and Fulendam are below them. But uh, we come here, and then we can go down to the Koiken Campion division. No, the top two. The top two non-youth teams did go up. So it was two, but we we won, you know, we just dominated that league. So Toure, Bravo, Shelter up. The injuries hit pretty hard. We don't have Mbabo either, so Ramsey's playing. No, he's not. We'll go Mamadou Zane and Lelamilla Bad Boy. We need guys that can rise to the occasion. Lelamilla Bad Boy can rise to the occasion. Um, Ramsey definitely should be on the bench. He is already. Uh, Martin steps in as the kind of defensive midfield guy. Branko is tired. So I'm going to go FCON. I like FCON. I like him in that spot. Uh, where's Elaine Diallo? He's going to take the Lorenzo Sage spot. Maxime Rodier is going to come in to play that left wing. Everybody else is fit. Yeah, we got, we got our team. Cool. All right, I've got a couple of wing spots in the bench here. We could bring up Lorenzo Sage, and then we need somebody that can play a wing. Could be Errol Shimshir. It is Errol Shimshir, isn't it? Yeah, it's Errol, It's definitely Errol Shimshir. Hasn't gotten a lot of time this season, but he can play both wings, and he's not a bad player. Shelter up suspended, and Babu hurt, Sedu Toure hurt, Pedro Bravo hurt. There's all those friggin' injuries in the last match, so FCON's playing the Regista. You're playing that uh, defending spot, and Mamadou Zane is playing right back. Jacques Ecomier. Do we want him at left back, or are we going to go? I'm going to go with Luca Dane. Just, you know, big match, old, wise, experienced player. A bit less of an athlete, but he's got the quality, loves a big match. Luca Dane over Jacques Ecomier. I, you know... Sometimes when you got to rotate like this, it can actually re uh, it can rejuvenate your team. They have the explosive Nestori here in Kunda, which is going to be a problem for our boy out there, Luca Dane. But he'll get after that loose first touch. Chat, we can win the league today.
First match we played that we can win the league today. Number one, Saint Etienne. Number two, Mets. We win, the league is ours. We lose, we have a one point lead into the final two matches. We are guaranteed automatic promotion now. We are going back to legal on a play against the PSGs of the world. We'll be crowned champions if we win the league today. Go make your dreams a reality and let's pull this team back up. Hold on, we need, we need, we need something. Let's go get him today, boys. Little eye to the tiger. This is it. <sighs> at home too. Who doesn't want to lift the trophy at home? All right, bad boy. F con. Bad I mean, ref. Do I didn't know he was actually going to call it? We don't have our normal guy, Branko, but we do have F con Bakiralu. Ref, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Oh, run with that. All right, it's all right. It's all right, we're fine. Because we still have Maxime Rodier. We still have Alain Diallo. We still have Lalamela Bad Boy. Doing his thing. Running right at him, floats it to Gasol. I, I saw somebody say he had a knock, so we've con we confirmed that. Didn't affect his uh, heart much. Well, less than ideal performance there from old Zach Steffen. Uh, yeah, we've been uh, been the better team thus far. Nice by Lelamela, bad boy, great play, Gesson. Evan Gesson. Oh, he got it there. That was a weird angle. Maxime Rodier taking him for pace. Gasol! <laughs> we stay composed in this house.
Evan Gasol, 1-1. We stay composed in this house. Lindex, thank you for the six months, dude. Come on, lads. <sighs> we keep going. We can win this. We work hard as a team. Yes. Don't want to say I nailed it, but I nailed it. Eyes on Gaston. We're going to let him uh, at least start the second half, even though he has that knock. Nice. Well done. Near side. Near side. Okay. There you go. Dude. FCON. Come on. Oh. Yo. Love the hustle from Gasson there. He's getting back in passing lanes. Okay, Barcelona. Chill out. Nice work from De Make them earn it, dude. What are you doing? All right, subs. Uh, Lorenzo Sage just started him, anyways. Hindsight's 2020. Um, let's go with Branco, and then FCON's just gonna be uh hanging out. Martin's not been playing well. We're gonna bring scales in for Luca Dane. That hasn't given me a good match today. And uh, Mamadou Zane also not giving me a great match today. So we're going to go with Calvin Ramsey for the last bit here. All right. Let's, um, let's, let's, let's do our normal adjustment to go try and take the game to the opposition here. We're going to do a double raise. Um, FCON is going to be, let's say like a deep lying playmaker. And then you're going to be the, uh, the center mid on support drifting around Lorenzo Sage going to get himself in the other half. Um, yeah, already did that. All right. Four changes, get the subs in, switch the formation, put the pressure on. Let's go. Uh, come on lads. Little encouraged shout. That's all right. That's ours. Rodier, Branco. Yeah! Like it. Love it. I love it. It's what he does! It's Lala Mala Bad Boy in the big moments! The teenage sensation from South Africa! The saint of football manager! It's Lala Mala Bad Boy again! With the patience, the composure, and the finish! 2-2! Two -two. A goal wins St. Etienne in the league.
Brandon Bowman. It's a corner for Saint Etienne in the green machine. The momentum is building now. Maxime Rodier, the teenager from the academy, he's in the corner. Rodier up towards Ruol. It falls for FCON. The only player that stuck it down after relegation is Gasol. He's offside. Just a brief moment of exuberance. But the pressure is on Mets now. They had the win they needed. A draw's not good for them, but a goal from Saint Etienne wins Saint Etienne the league. No, it's on. It's on. It's a good goal. Cook through all. He's been a really solid center back for us all year. He just bit and lost. Great defense, Ruol. Great defense by Ruol. Just enough air on that for him to cover. Man, that's tough. Need a moment right now. Oh my, th this is shaping up. Guess all. It's guess all. Wait, I need to shout at you. All right. Well, we just spice things up a little bit. That's for sure. We shipped him that game, dude. Stefan played his worst game of the year. We absolutely shipped him that game. They created, uh, you know, they created one really nice goal, but the other two goals we just absolutely shipped them. We 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 handed it to him.
Plaza, thank you for the 26 months, dude. This is going to be an anxious last two matches. Lost on XG? I mean, like, yeah, we lost on XG, but that's because they had to tap it into an empty net, dude. You Like, did you see that giant penalty-sized... Uh, yeah, Stefan um, should have should have caught it, but he lost track of the ball and deflected it into the path of a, a guy who was standing in front of an empty net. So that's where their XG came from. We dominated the match. We um, didn't do a good job of creating obvious goal scoring chances, but yeah, that's, uh, we've used we've used up our leeway now. So uh, Evan Gasson was a twisted knee, so he's out for I think the next match. Oh, no, he's not. We've got 11 days. Okay. Glorious. Get at the reset button. Two matches. Win them both. We're uh, league champion. So I controlled the match like 10 hog. I mean, yeah, look, I, in terms of tactical adjustments, I thought we had the edge in that one. But unlike 10 hog, we're also top of the league still, so. Let me get a barometer for the uh, dressing room. I don't think we need a league meeting. We've had two heartbreaking losses, but we built up a cushion to where, you know, we could have those heartbreaking losses hit us. And now we've got an 11-day break to get everybody fit, get everybody healthy. Suspension over for shelter up. Okay, Calvin, let's not. Let's just not, Calvin. All right, anybody that needs it can get a run in the reserve match on Sunday. Be perfect. And then we got, you know, working our way to the next weekend. Perfectly fine. Okay. Nah, not the U19s. We'll play the reserve match. All right, I'll roll I'll roll the team meeting. I just did it quickly because I was so nervous that if that went wrong, we might have just lost the league title there in the dressing room. Uh, but we kind of nailed it. But we kind of nailed it. We're back up to excellent locker room atmosphere. It dipped a little bit there, as you saw. Oh. Let me just listen to this song or no, is it? Oh, this is the uh, other version of it. Okay. Oh, all right. We, we hit it. That was good. We hit the team meeting. I need to get both the injured guys, uh, a shorter abbreviated run in the reserve match as well, because all that match sharpness could be very important for us. Enter Miami, Drew is drawing out Hilal. Oh, is that match happening? The old, oh, it's the last time Messi and, uh, oh, no, wait, sorry. Not El Nasser, Al Halal. There, yeah, MLS is making so much money off that. That's, uh, dude, that is not what I needed. It was a, Bran a Branco Vandenbaum an injury that might limit him to the bench. So you need to win so you, another a better team will offer me a contract. I mean, that's not really it though. At the end of the day, you know, the the fun is the journey. It's the winning tra you know, we've won a trophy every year of this save. We won the South African second division, then we won nine trophies in two years with Orlando. You know, like the fun of the whole thing is is winning. Is winning trophies.
All right, so we've got Alger away, Auxerre, and then uh, Sochal, both on the road. I feel like the messy move hurts uh, MLS more than it helps. I mean, I don't think it hurts MLS. I just don't think it's as good for MLS as a lot of uh, people seem to think. Because the MLS really was, it, it is, growing a reputation as a team that exports young talent to Europe. It's done that a lot more recently. And that's what it was like basing the, the league on. You know, the same as, like, I'd say the best Western Hemisphere leagues. You've got Argentina and Brazil where they're, they're trying, they, you know, they're trying to develop that huge local and national passion, but the best players go to Europe to uh, kind of continue the development. Where now, you know, talent, like old talented players from Europe do come to MLS to pick up a nice big paycheck and, you know, live in the United States for a little while and hang out and have a good time and eat at a Burger King. But like, um, yeah, I, I, when people are like, oh, is this going to, you know, is this the moment that the U.S. finally, like, falls in love with the game? I'm like, hi. I think you not like big matches, too. I think we can just move on from Jaleel Elias. Patrick Fuca placed on the transfer list. Well, that's really exciting for Patrick because that's a guy that decided that he wanted to leave the club instead of staying here. And that's worked out how? How did that work out for you? That guy decided he wanted to leave instead of, instead of staying a part of the project. And you know what? He wasn't even that good to begin with. So when he just said he wanted to leave, I went, you know what? You do that. You have a rip-roaring good time playing wherever the hell you want to go play. That uh, guy's not good. All right, we're sending all of our uh, scouting stuff to our inbox now. Um, that helped fix it, but it means that our scouting center stuff is just absolutely, like, just monstrous now. Crimis con toys. Oh, this is going to be uh, a lot of the guys from the, like, the gar you know the guardian list of best wonder kids sort of stuff axel valentine jean martins well i mean i wish that guy was interested in me because he is disgusting like absolutely disgusting like please play for me well honestly if we're in league on do you think that guy wants to play for us maybe actually maybe if like we go up to league on i think that guy might want to play for us I'm thinking maybe. So all these guys are from the uh, list of the best young wonder kids in the world. Of course, Paulo Enrique is already a world-class player at Flamenco. Look at that Australian. Hello. Hello, sir. Yeah, I mean, we did scout a giant list of the best wonder kids in the world. And some of them are not on major clubs. So, like, we got to update our reports on some of them, but... Kind of in business right now. That's a rare dude that's cheap. Girona's got one. Maldonado. Mido Magdi. Okay, I already know about him. Matias Olsen. Oh, we're back to the normies, huh? No, we're not. Just kidding. More Wonder Kids. Oh. Do I see Xavi managing Inter Miami? Uh, no. I see him going to a job the same way that Unai Emery did where he goes to a job where that the club will just be very excited to have somebody of his caliber managing the club at all. And then he will probably, my prediction would be find that type of success because Xavi is very clearly a good coach. I've always thought he was a good coach. The guy was born for coaching and was 
flying high there for a little while. And he, he, he was – he's a good coach. And so I think if he lands in a position like Unai Emery and takes over a club like a full step down from Barcelona where they're just happy to have him and they'll give him – a little bit more leeway, right? They're not going to be as insanely breathing down his neck the whole time. I think he'll end up having a really good managerial career. He'll build himself back into like he'll be the coach of freaking Bayern in five years or something, you know? That's where that's where I see him going. Do I see him managing Inter Miami? No. I think that's below him. <laughs> Maybe he does it for a year because he wants to hang out with Messi again, but like it's below him. He's he's a better coach than managing Inter Miami. Not that there's anything wrong with being the manager of Inter Miami. You're still a high level professional coach. It's just, you know, I I think he would want to stay in European competition. Really, no, get out of here, my good man. You see Pep and Xavi doing a switch? No, I think Manchester City would be able to lure a Zinedine Zidane out of retirement. Retirement. I think I think if Pep does leave, Manchester City is instantly. To me, if I was a manager, it'd be the third most attractive job in the world. As long as they don't get yeeted into the sun by the the rules uh commission, like the FFP stuff. I would say it would still it would be third. It'd be behind Real Madrid and Bayern for me. Like if I if it was me that you were trying to hire, I would take Real Madrid and I would take Bayern and then I would take City. We never go for Zizou. I mean, I look Manchester City job comes open and they're still like in the Premier League without a fifty point deduction. Um, I, I think they could get almost anybody. You know, except for very few people. National teams, I mean, that's just like at a different ranking, you know? There's certain managers that like to do national teams instead. I feel like I would actually personally prefer national team management, but I think national teams, it's Brazil. Um, and then on the next tier, it would be France, Italy, Spain, Germany, England, Argentina. Just the monster international jobs. How is the stream? I slept to you singing loans. Oh, nice. That must have been the best night's sleep of your life. I'm jealous of the tremendous night's sleep that you just got. But I really think that, like, as long as Man City doesn't get yeeted into the sun, it's one of the best jobs in the world. I think they'd be able to get the top candidates to be interested in that job if Pep leaves. And I don't think Xavi is necessarily in that category. Um, because I think one thing that Pep has done very well that Xavi just demonstrated that he wasn't able to do is withstand a high-pressure environment for a very long time as a manager. So what they would be looking for is another manager that could do that. They could withstand a high-level pressure environment for a long time as a manager when things maybe aren't going your way at times. Like, things have not gone Pep's way in the past, but he's, you know, he hasn't been like, I'm leaving, I can't do it, you know? Not that there's anything wrong with that. I mean, know your limits, right? But Pep just seems uniquely equipped to handle that for a long amount of time. Wrexham scored, hell yeah, brother! 19 minutes in, and it's Wrexham 1, Blackburn nil in the FA Cup. Andy Cannon for Wrexham. Oh, uh, how's Blackburn doing this year? Are they are they vulnerable, perhaps? Well, Zealand, they're not in the championship, so no, they are. I was like, I thought they were. <laughs> they're in 18th, so they're not exactly electric at the moment, which, fair. And I have lost track. I'm not caught up on my welcome to Wrexham. They're in League One, right? Or are they still trying to get up? They're just in League One in every football manager save ever. So they're in League Two, which is basically League One. <laughs> they're in second in League Two. Top three teams get promoted. So they're looking like, you know, looking like they're on for a promotion season. 
to go up to League One. Blackburn trying to avoid that relegation down to League One. Could be in the same league next year, you know? But, yeah, it's a two-league jump for uh, Wrexham right now. Trying to make the dream work. All righty, let's take a look. Who we got? All these guys. And Babu's still working his way back. You have 45. Okay. Goalkeeper of the season shortlist announced. Bro, the irony, though. Zach Steffen is uh, on the list and actually potentially the voting favorite, dude. He's got the highest no uh, rating to be goalkeeper of the year in the second division after dropping a 6.0 in the most important match of the year up to this point. Sure. I guess. Oh, Zach, how did that happen, man? Mets is playing Twa, who's sixth in the league. So if we win and Mets loses, we win the league today. If we win and Mets do anything other than lose, then we all or anything other than win, we basically win the league because we have a plus 14 goal difference thing on them. Let's just make sure it's not results between teams. Uh, it's goal difference results between teams, goals scored. So our goal difference is way up on them, so we're fine. Yeah, the list was submitted before the last game. Clearly. Clearly it was. All right, Branko's ready to go. He understands the assignment. Oh, it's like, yeah, I guess Rodier did get a straight red card in the last match. That is fair. Where's uh, Shelly? There he is. All right, so we have Stefan, Zane, Rual, Fai, Dane. Not Dane. I can't, I can't do it. He was bad again in the last match. We're going Jacques Ecomier. Rual, Fai, Stefan, Zane, Ecomier. Not, not, not Zane either. Calvin Ramsey. Okay, that is our back six. And then keeper. And then our front four is Gasson, Shelly, Efcon, bad boy. Uh, Seydou Toure is on the way back. I am going to put Seydou Toure in to start because I like bad boy off the bench is probably the best way to use some in a match like this. If Seydou Toure is not playing well, then bad boy can bring the energy. That elite mentality, but he'll stay on the bench. Over Alain Diallo has not been good recently. Um, okay. Well, actually, going to go with Scales. I've liked him the most starting at that left back spot. Uh, no, we're not. Uh, yes, we are. Win two matches, win the league. We could win it in this match away against mid table on chair. They are safe. They're playing with house money and we're playing for everything. So. Mets lose and we win. Then we've won the league. We have guaranteed automatic promotion, but those consecutive heartbreaking losses have us fighting for the title. Going maybe into the final day here. Rodier, yeah, Rodier is a big miss. We're we're gonna miss Maxime Rodier. He's been a really influential player off the bench. Nice tackle to set the tone.
All right, are we crossing this or are we shooting this? As long as it works, I don't care. Let's go. Was he having it? Oh, great pass. Oh, great pass. Look for this shot, Sadu. Oh, look for the shot. We're still in a really good spot. We've got great numbers in and around the box. Just got to find a way into that wing. Find a way to change the level here, guys. Really? Really? Oh, Branko. Be a great time to order one up. Branko. All right, Franco Vandenbelman, the captain. Has it back. Franco! That was pretty. That might have been going in. Thoughts on Senegal Ivory Coast? Senegal is a better team right now. Ivory Coast has the quality. They need that individual quality to shine through. But Senegal has been the better team, is the better team of the last year, five years. For the reigning African champions, they had a very easy group stage where everybody else was tripping all over themselves trying to get out of it. I, Senegal has to be the favorite for that match, but they're definitely sitting there like you're playing with fire a bit, right? Because Ivory Coast has the ability to ruin your day if they can put it together. But they don't even have a coach. Ivory Coast fired its coach during the tournament. It's got to be Senegal. Oh, good run. Bandit Bowman. Let's go. Shelter up. Another corner. Keep it up. Keep it up. Oh, Ramsey. Loving the moves. Shelly. Scales. Liam Scales. Ah. Okay. <clears throat> Keep working hard. It'll it'll come. Come on now. I have, I have faith in you, Shelter Up. But we need we need it now. We need it now. Uh, only adjustment mentality is going to be attacking. We're going to hunt that goal a little bit more. But I'm not making any tactical changes yet. No tactical changes yet. Let's go. That's another good ball from Branco. Kept it onside. Love to see that. Branco, Shelly, handball or something. Branco, looking for Gasol, handball or something. We're putting their defense under a lot of pressure. Putting the ball into the right area. Branko. Oh, nice play by Branko there. Slick pass. Bravo! Yeah, I'm going to have to reread that dad joke. My brain was doing backflips. This first header gets blocked. The second shot saved by Rizzo. Dude. 
I got sick last week in a business trip um, last week in Madrid. When I got back to my room, I was surprised to learn the hotel had an on-staff doctor. I should have known better to be surprised by the Spanish in physician. What is physician? In a, like I, I, I get half of it, but I don't get the whole thing. So it's like obviously Spanish in physician. It's the doctor at the hotel. But what what is the play like Spanish and what's the play on it? Oh, Spanish Inquisition. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah, it's really good. The Spanish in physician. The Spanish Inquisition. I don't know, chat. I I like it. I like it, but I'm not like I'm going B plus. Dirk, thank you so much for the gift and stuff, dude. It was a it's a banger, Bob. It is. But chat just went uh <laughs> No, I don't know what the Spanish Inquisition is. I just feel like it was a little Maybe it's part of a Monty Python sketch that I don't know. I saw somebody say Monty Python, but And I've given A's to dad jokes that I didn't get before. So it's not just because I didn't get it. But uh, if I'm, I, I, I watch Monty Python and the Holy Grail, but that's the only Monty Python I've ever, uh, I've ever watched. It's a Monty Python. Okay, so that's why I'm on the B. Well, then very, very well done, Bob Manuel. I, I'm the one that doesn't have the cultural knowledge here. Shelly's on a 6.2. So that's a thing that is happening. Sub, I know I'm making Jacques Sicomier there. Blackburn equalize. Nice. I know I'm making that sub. Mario Martin, I know we're bringing it up right here and we're going to play with energy and we're going to get after these guys um okay um All right, we got to get out. Uh, we got to get Sadu Toure and Andreas Shelder up off. I really wish we had Maxime Rodier, but we don't. Yeah, who raided in? Rory, thank you so much for raiding in, dude. We are in a title fight right now. We need a goal to go back to the top of the league with one match left. Hope you had a good stream, dude. Hustle from Alvaro Rodriguez. Okay. Make a fay. Rodriguez. Look for Martin. Look for Martin. Good. Do I have Martin on? I don't want him on that ball winner. Wow. All right. We are all the way up against it now. Absolutely all the way up against it. They plan 4 3 3. Yeah, we can get away with that. We have to win this game. Very likely, uh, we have to win this game. So we need two goals.
We need one more. We need one more. We need one more. It's a great ball by Alvaro Rodriguez. Great finish by Gasson. Alvaro's repaying the faith. We need one more. We're not done. We are not done. We need one more. We need one more goal. We're staying just as aggressive. We need one more goal. Bad boy. Ah, uh, that's all right. That's ours. Martin. Martin. Oh, oh my God. How do you miss that? Alvaro, your assist was so pretty, too. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Alvarez again. All right, 1-1. One, one. Mets is winning their game. We need to push. Uh, we need to push for the three points. We're not getting a highlight with the amount of like pitch dominance we've had. All right, uh, you're off. Um, we're gonna do the last real switch that we have, which is that. Lorenzo Sage, give me the goods, man. Give me the goods. Nice. Run with it. Run with it, bad boy. Make the play. Make the play. Yes. Ramsey. Well, what a weird turn. We work with that. No, he's off. Got to be able to figure that out, guys. The other guy was on. You just let the, just let the ball go. Oh. Let's go, Ruol. Oh, let's go, bad boy. Come on now. Gasson. Inside, bad boy. Pen. Ref. Dear Lord, ref. Bad boy. Gasson. Ramsey. It's a Comier. What the hell is that? It's Ramsey. It's got to be somebody. Oh, look at that play by Mario Martin. Giving the ball to the other team for no reason. All right, we can go a little crazier, but not much. All right, uh, we gotta we gotta hoof that ball up the field now, brother. I have mine uh, advance, yeah. Okay. One goal keeps us top of the league going into the final match day. Oh, nice tackle by Martin. At Comier. Is Rod on side? Nope, of course he's not. Well, this would be something. Bad boy. Has to be now. Rodriguez.
Wow. 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 Just didn't do enough. I I don't even know where we did we didn't do enough. We gotta get lucky on the last day now. Wow. It's not even mauled. I'm in shock. I'm in shock, dude. I'm legitimately in shock. We've been the better team in all three games, and we have one point from our last three games. Like, I'm just in shock at this point. I Like, honestly, straight up, dude, I'm just in shock. Like, it, it, it's brutal. I don't know what the odds were, but the way it's the way it's come back on us, it's just really unfortunate. Yeah, great time. This is probably the time that I would like to celebrate finishing our Continental A license the least. Hopefully they fund a new one for us. Oh, man. I saw uh, Senegal scored. Uh, somebody was saying Senegal scored, so my Senegal prediction's looking hot right now. Diallo in the fourth minute, so... Senegal's off and running, and Blackburn's taking the lead against Wrexham 2-1, so they don't want to help out the documentary. Oh, so Blackburn's making it look okay, and Senegal looks honestly like the team that really should be going to win the whole thing. It's them or Morocco, I would say. Um, both have decently difficult draws, but... We'll do a little chance conversion training. How's that sound? That sound all right? All right, they funded my new coaching course, which is great. So we're in line to finish our Continental Pro after just six seasons of management. But, you know, we knew that was going to happen. Um, they won uh, National 2 Group C. Sweet, our reserve team had a very good season. Uh, we've been sending our guys down to play there. So does that mean they can get up to the Championnat National or can they not? Uh, no. Okay, so this is the league they're stuck in. All right, that's that's fair. At least they won it, though. Good effort. French fourth division is the cap for the reserve teams. Wow. Wow. Hey guys, we, we bottled it. No, no way around it. It's complete bottle. We've been top of the league from match day 17 to match day 33. Didn't pull away enough clearly. And then just, let a few games slip that we really should have been winning down the stretch there. Yeah, we still have a chance. Uh, we need Mets to not win on the final day, and we are on the road against the fourth team in the league. Um, I, honestly, though, it's not like we're playing particularly poorly. We just need those decisive moments that determine matches. We just need to be better in those moments. Wow. Absolutely savage.
Nah, no need for team meeting. We held one before the last match. Now, I made I made my own sandwich today. It's turkey, Swiss, and mustard. I packed a lunch for the stream. Training facility has been upgraded. Sweet. That means we are at state-of-the-art training facilities. Go team. Now we're fine. I'm under contract for multiple years. I'm at a B minus. I've gotten the team back up, but I want that trophy. We got to go through Sochiao to win it. So the situation is uh, if Mets loses, we can draw and win the league on goal difference. Uh, if Mets draws, we have to win. If Mets wins, we cannot win. That's the situation. That's all that matters now. That's where we are. We played our way into this spot. Right when it looked like we were going to pull away with the league, we've, we've ended up here. We've ended up in a dog fight with Mets for, for the league. The Bordeaux plays Twa earlier for some reason than everybody else plays at the same time. That's what's happening right now. Yeah, promotion secured. We're going up automatically. That's not in the balance. All right. Um, Bordeaux pulled out the win. They will finish outside the playoff as well. The playoff is secured. It's Nîmes, Sochaux, and Laval. Uh, relegation. Pau is guaranteed relegated. Paris FC and Quivelli Rouen enter the last match day. Not safe. Same with Valenciennes. Um, yeah, we play Sochaux and they play, uh, Mets plays, uh, Laval. So we both have difficult matches. We play the team in fourth. They play the team in fifth. Very possible, you know, very possible that either of the teams that we're playing against could be in legal next uh, year as well. So let's find somebody, Jacques Secomier, to play left back. <sighs> Stefan. Ramsey, Ruol, Faye, Ecomier, Bravo, Vandenbauman, Saidu Toure, Lorenzo Sage. Now my goalkeeper hasn't gotten hurt all year. Statistically speaking, the odds of me needing the extra sub are way higher, so I'm going to go with uh, taking the goalkeeper off the bench here. I need Rodier. I want a Diallo up on the bench. I want Rodier on the bench. I want Bad Boy on the bench. Fcon's not really influenced a game off the bench this year, um, in the same way those guys have. So that's what we wanna we wanna do. They've got two wing backs that they like to really get involved. So we're to make sure that we meet both of those guys. The point of attack. We've got Lorenzo Sage dropping deeper. He's gonna get the start. The Mozambican kid that we found in the Mozambique league. He's been the best of the three attacking midfielders. Uh, yeah. Team's ready.
thank you. Yes, thank you. For you have reminded us that nothing is above you and that you alone, FM Gods, you determine the winner and loser on the pitch of life. And we also come before you today to pray that you smile upon us in our hour of need. For we have never wavered in our belief that it is through your light alone we can win. Please, today, show us that light if you deem us worthy of a championship. Show us the light that will bring us a league to a title. We pray to you, FM Gods, in the name of Lelabella Bad Boy. ride let's freaking ride chat let's freaking ride clear eyes full hearts can't lose control we can control win the dang match look grim be the grim reaper right when they think they're safe we win the toughest match that we've had in a while and we put it right back on their plate and say hey you got to go earn it today be the grim reaper oh, that's a sick pass There you go. Give me that ball. Shelter up. It's 
It's all right. Still hearts. We're fine. Oh, nice pass. Sage. Oh, Toure. Guess all! Oh, he was off. He was off. He was off. Oh, this freaking song. Catch him to the moon. Out of here. Easy. Follow the ball when he passes it there. Oh, no. are up. They're over here. This is Matt Simbalo. Good start. Good starting point. Going to construct a nice move here. Up the wing, back to the midfield. Lovely. Opposite wing, using the whole field. You freaking love to see it. I mean, it's not a good chance. But it's not a, it's not a bad chance, you know? We're in it now. Just got to win this game. Very, very simple. Shelter up. Andreas Shelter up. Jacques Ecomier. Mika Faye. Branko, look at the wing. Ah, Mika Faye, Lorenzo. He's got that 18 first touch. Always receives it perfectly. Ramsey. Oh, look at Calvin. Dude, that's ours. Good. Bravo has been a little too frisky with his passing today. Little too frisky with his passing. Nice tackle. That could be a Mika Fay. Are we looking? Look at the line. Yes, shelter up. Perfect. Oh, a little more ambitious again, but good take back. Have it, son! Line, line. Good. Middle. Perfect. All right, Bravo. Yes. It's bad from Sage. That's just real bad from Sage. That's our ball, though. Shelter up playing some defense today. Shelly. Where's Gasson? Branco. It's Lorenzo Sage. Come on, bro. Prez, thank you so much for the three months. be hard on him. That was a tough decision, but I'm going to be hard on him. <sighs> Switch the mentality to attacking. Shelly, Branko. That's never going in.
Everything is hanging in the balance the last 40 minutes of the season. One goal from us, and we are top of the league. Bravo. Saito Torre. Oh, I liked the idea. Nearly worked. It's not a bad giveaway. It's a giveaway going towards their goal. Like, obviously, you'd prefer not to give the ball away, but we're not getting caught in, like, a bad position with that. Uh, now we're not in a good spot. Okay, that was... That must have deflected off their guy, because that hit somebody in there. Had a bad start to the second half here. I like... Uh, there's a good mindset with the guys. We get Ramsey off for Mamadou Sané. Shelley's coming off for Rodier, who's had an absolutely massive season. Sage staying in there for now, so that'd be three subs. Okay, I already did that. 30 minutes. Laval and Mets is level at nil. We are level with Sochal. We score one goal. We're top of the league right now as it stands. And we have a corner. Nice play by Mika Fay, but he just fouled him. That was a foul. He wasn't even near the ball. Surprised they're even looking at it. All right, Stefan, I'm making those changes regardless of what happens. If you're wondering why I'm doing that now, we're making those changes regardless of what happens. If you go down, you go down swinging. But Zach, this would be a sick time to atone for your sins, my brother. This would be a awesome time to atone. Oh, he almost had it, dude. He almost had that. <laughs> so encourage we've got our new setup Diallo Rodier, Bad Boy Rodriguez, Ecomier, Zane, Vanden Bauman, and Lorenzo Sage coming from the deeper position.
But we're gonna need to go now. There you go, hit a ball. Hit a ball, good. Diallo, there you go. Ecomier. Oh, you just gotta get it in there. Oh, he did it, it's Diallo! And it's on! He's on, he's on side. It's come through, he's on side, let's go. Couple minutes for everything now. Couple minutes for everything, Alain Diallo has scored, it's 1-1. Alain Diallo has scored, it's 1-1. Yeah, I'm gonna stay on, I'm gonna stay on what we were doing. We, I actually skipped the replay, so here's the replay for those that missed it, but it is game on. Jacques Ecomier to Alain Diallo. It's game on. Changes it in, uh, changes in, encourage shout. Oh my goodness, what a play by bad boy. What a header by Lorenzo Sage. And they're off for everything. Rodriguez. Hit the ball. Oh, what a recovery by Mamadou Zane. Franco, oh, it's a terrible giveaway. I, I don't blame Rual for taking a chance in that. The numbers are terrible. Oh my goodness. Oh, Branko, bad giveaway, brother. So it's not just what's happening here. There also, if there is a goal, like if Laval scores, we also win the league now because we are level. They're passing the space on. That's it. That's the last change we got. So here we go.
That's going to haunt me for a very long time. That's going to haunt me for a very long time. That's fine. That's only still getting paid nothing. First trophy list season of my managerial career. First trophy list season of my managerial career here at St. Etienne, but we did go up. We have been promoted back to league all, but we did not win the league. Wow, it sucked. Oh. Yeah, their vision's fine. All right, I've got nothing else to talk to you guys about. Or actually, let's talk about League on next year. Good position to avoid a relegation battle. Liam doesn't agree with it, but everybody else... Uh, Okay. Oh. Wow. Wow. That sucked. Never seen you like this. I usually don't lose. That was bit. I mean, that was for the most part should have been easier than what we did last year at Knock Breda. We just, I mean, we really we 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 had it. If we played the way we did, like you look at the schedule, dude. If we played the way we did for. You know, most of the year, just at any point in the final four matches, like we would have, they would have been fine. I mean, we lost away against the worst team in the league and then couldn't beat us there, couldn't beat Sochal, lost in the last second of Mets. Like, it, it was just, it all happened. And you only, you only get one shot at it. So it's only, it's all only going to happen in one, you know, one way out of the infinite possibilities. Yeah, it sucked. We'll take a look. We'll take a look. Out of the job security window, and uh, we can... Sort the uh, available jobs by reputation. Rangers is open. 
Newell's old boys is open. Bordeaux fired their coach again after not getting promoted again. Um, hmm. Are they finished last year? Fifth. What the hell's going on there? All right, Aberdeen. The first non-old firm team to win it forever. Back to the Ghanaian national team. Dude, I'll lead them at the World Cup again. Dude, screw it. All right, we're, we're, we're just taking a look. I mean, Newell's Old Boys is in 22nd place right now, so it's probably not the move. I'm probably still just a three-star coach. I mean, we didn't even win a trophy this year. Is he what's popping? Uh, you know, not much. Uh, just emphatically bottled the league. Um, lost it by a point. Oh no, I'm three. I'm three and a half now. I don't know. I, I guess you know, getting promoted also helps. But built a good reputation. I, I, maybe it's getting the Continental A license. I uh, maybe. But I'm like a big time coach, reputation wise now. Uh so I we probably get like a major South American job. The problem is like League MX. These teams are all trash. Finished seventeenth, dude. They finished second to last. I don't want I don't want I don't want the bad teams in Mexico. I'd take a good team in Mexico. But all of those are bad teams. So I know, I know, I know that like Newell's is Messi and Me Messi's team. I know it's Bielsa's team, but like they're in twenty second place, you know. We'd be going into a worse league. Uh, we would be going into a worse position in that league. We'd be going to a lower reputation team. <laughs> Dang it, dude. Are we changing jobs? I mean, we entertain it every off season. They, they've given us more than enough uh, resources to fight in league all. Um, I like the team that we have now. We need to restructure it. Obviously, I, I mean, there, there's some guys that are on their way out. Left back's a huge hole in our team. Ekomye is not starting quality at left back. Uh, we need to kind of overhaul our depth a little. Like Kevin Mbabu is kind of a, will we bring him in this season? And then he is good enough. We'll try and unload him, send him to a place where he'll actually play. Goalkeeper, obviously, we've got Andre Gomes as the backup, but We'll probably want to bring in somebody that's a starter, like Stefan was alone, um, and Marrera and Whitworth. We loaned in our, our goalkeeping department this year. And Branco is old. Uh, he's getting old. He's still very good, though. He's still a legit player, so I think we'll keep him around. Pedro Bravo is not old and is still good, and... We like Pedro, so Mr. 19 jumping reach at defensive midfield. Then maybe we could upgrade our playmaking on the outside. Somebody like Sadu Toure definitely probably needs to take a step back. The uh, Rodier is mostly what he is going to be. He's a tall athlete that can push the pace down the wing. She did well for us and Oh, he's all right. Martin's got issues with his mentality, but he's still a good player. We need a striker. Gasol was loaned in, but Alvaro Rodriguez really proved that he's not um not up to par. I mean, the guy played 29 matches and scored seven goals for me. It's just not enough. Uh, I'm worried about somebody like Alain Diallo. Can't really rely on a guy like that in the next division, although he is developed into a quality player. Lorenzo Sage can keep growing with the team. He has his potential is in, is very high. His potential is very high, according to to everything we know. So he'll he'll keep growing, but 
Yeah, Mario Martin, not a big match guy. Definitely, he was like apprehensive on the bench a few times. He made a mistake that led to the goal against Alger, which obviously was a brutal one. Bro. What's our budget and sizable? Good idea. Check the payroll budget relative to the teams in the um, top league here. I just who spent ten million. You know that's offensive, dude. They deserve to get tossed. So we're stepping in for Toulouse and I just sue. Uh, PSG won the league by twenty points. Ang man. Oh yeah, our wage budget is seventy five. Uh so that would be like fringe European level wage budget wise. Fr like fringe, uh like right at the edge of it's top it, it's upper mid table wage spend for the top league is what they've given me. That's what they've given me. We have a transfer budget of eighteen million, so oh, those guys we uh we care about, but let's we're like guaranteed promoted now. Let's go to maybe the guys that we could sign, like an old Jao Martins, who would be a brilliant addition to the team. And let's start to explore that. We're very interested, and he doesn't want to move under any circumstances. Well, that's bold. Um, let's just make you say no, then. Let's just make you say no. Abdulkader is not a four-star player. We really need to. We're the oldest uh, scouting. Uh, hey, I hold the scouting report on Abdulkader 22 days. Uh. All right, we're going to left back, perhaps. I like a left back. Max C. Weber. Well, he just played however many matches last year in the championship, 39. So, did they go back up? If they didn't, he might be available. Yeah, I think so. They uh, they've dropped ninety points. All right, all right. Abdu Kante, he just moved, right? So we need to investigate Abdulaziz Ziani. Super high potential, but that's not the game we're playing. We're playing the let's win the game operation. So that's um, what we're looking for. Musa Diara, dude's a red star. Okay. Pop Scout. Just moved there. No, sorry, Partisan. Oop. My bad. He moved to Partisan for $3.5 million. I'm sure they'd let him go for something similar. He is a very well-rounded left back. Does everything well, nothing great. Nothing wrong with that. We like that. Christopher Lund. 
Papa Scout update that report. It's 82 days old, so want some information? Uh, right. Who's coming available on a free? Jack Harrison is coming available on a free. Hardworking, excellent touch, very adaptable. Uh, we'll, we'll make sure. These reports are always old. Expiring. In the next three months. So he, he, okay, so it's an Edouard. It's already got a deal. Brian Aguirre and Samuel A. Mattieri and Diego Gonzalez. So these are the guys that are actually expiring. Be at least mildly interested in a transfer. Don't forget the non-EU rules. Yeah, but like everybody's EU. <laughs> Everybody is EU. Rico. Oh, a little slow there, Spec Snyder. Yeah, nobody. Nobody that's super attractive. Um, let's go to any people whose contracts are over a year. Talking about you fools, you know. You guys need to remove you from the end of contract shortlist. Well, this dude's just available for free still. Christian Kuan also available for free. Let's just trial him now. Let's go. Yeah, we're just... Doesn't look like there's any great job available right now that we'd want to take, so we're just kind of looking around. Aaron Ramsey, he'd be one of the foreign guys. I think a rule change, though. Is the, the rule changes up here? Or is it the uh, is it the same? Is it four? Under sixteen are not allowed to play. Fair. Uh, maximum four non EU. Uh, okay. Oh, the rule is exactly the same. Easy enough. Uh, Aaron Ramsey, you are trialing with me, my dude. But uh, you would be one of the foreign players, which is the only reason we haven't pounced already. So Juan Maldonado would be interested in moving to us, but he is insanely expensive. He's got an 84 million minimum fee release clause. It's a world-class deep lying playmaker. Absolutely insane world-class deep lying playmaker. Should be Spanish too, yeah. All right, but he's playing for the Uruguayan national team, also Spanish nationality, so he's EU. Oh, absolutely crazy player. All right. All right, I'm trying to get like a nice direction for our um, transfer business. I think what we could reasonably do is have like a $26 million transfer budget, but be very, I, I'm not worried by his lack of physicality. I think he's just a stupid good player. Uh, oh my goodness, dude. Wow. Uh, Thomas Pozo, 1.1 million asking price is very low. He would be, I believe, not. Yeah, I didn't see it in the scouting report. Okay, check Alvej. Why? Why is that what I typed in? Ivan Alves. Ivan Alves.
Oh, goodness. They somehow finish last and are going right back down every team I leave. No, he doesn't have a relegation clause. Leslie renegotiated his contract. There are other guys on this team that do, though. There are other guys on this team that do. Oh, they were starting Ishan Bagas. I wonder they were losing. I don't. I never liked Ishan. You were starting Benjamin Jimenez. Good God, man! I leave you in charge of the team for five. Oh, he's hurt. Okay. Robert Soldriguez is hurt. He's also opting out at the end of his contract. We can't offer him yet, but jump man's hanging around. Yeah, they really uh they really blew this team up, didn't they? They really blew that team up. Man, this, hmm. Jumpman would solve your balloon header problem? Yeah, that's true. We're going to start to try and make some moves on some guys. So Kamalo doesn't make any sense at this level. We're going to look for a loan. Uh, Nuno Lima doesn't make a ton of sense, does he? Uh, Mbabu is another guy that we're going to look to move. So we're going to approach the transfer window like we are going to be here another year. We're going to be pretty proactive with it. His contract runs out at the end of this year. We're just going to let uh, him go. Uh, goodbye, Afcon. Mamadou Koulibaly's contract does not. So we are going to try and find a deal for Mamadou Koulibaly. Errol Shimsir uh, is another guy that I didn't really give him a lot of opportunities this year. I'm not going to move him immediately guess all's on his loan from nice he's gonna go back but we have a gaping hole that could be filled by a star striker if anybody happens to uh, have a friend who's particularly good at scoring goals that might be interested i uh i am i am certainly interested why do they hate on liam scale so much dude's perfectly fine perfectly acceptable passable left back center back i don't know why they think liam scales is the worst thing ever uh yeah i know but i just wanted to try why is that guy not interested in me it's of course the exact same reason why he uh is still at the club that he's at but you know when the season resets and we go up a league all then maybe he's gonna look at it and be like oh top five leagues Uh, yeah, I know Scales didn't like me wanting to avoid relegation, but everybody else did. So that was cool. Maybe Scales didn't like it because he sees himself the same way my staff does, where he thinks he's not very good. Where I am actually uh, a believer. Do, 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 do. Self Rodriguez. Yeah, I'm not I'm not high on Alvaro Rodriguez. He was he was not great this year. Calvin Ramsey. Yeah, well the Scotsman's 
Struggling to pick up the French. He's struggling with the French a little bit. Entirely, entirely fair, Calvin. Struggling with the French. Oh, my God, we didn't win the league. That's so crazy. I, I, well, I'm, I'm just kind of going through the motions, shell-shocked. We're not going to change. There's no job open that's, I think, better than ours that we have right now. I think Rangers would be a pretty lateral move from where we we are right now. So I'm not uh, I'm not tripping over myself. I also am, you know, I'm partial to Celtic, and so it's probably you know not the move I want to make. So so Shaw and Laval Laval just trashed him three 0 Why couldn't you have done that in the other freaking round? All right, semifinal Nîmes Olympique against Laval, trying to get up to Ligue 1. Why couldn't we do that, dude? Wow. Jeez. Carolina Cream, thank you so much for the prime, dude. Ex Katushka, thank you for the prime. Thanks for supporting the stream. Zibikin, thank you for the 11 months. Undefined, thank you for the five months. Viber, thank you so much for the eight months. Chubis, thank you for the nine months. Chris Xavier, thank you so much for the prime. Thank you guys for being a part of the Elite Online Gaming. <sighs> I usually come into your streams, love your YouTube bids, even though I'm not a big soccer fan, but your song playlist and stream absolutely slaps. Yeah, we had a bit of a different playlist today, but it's it's been doing the job. It didn't help us win, which sucked. <laughs> but, you know, can't win them all, I guess. All right, wait, what if... What if we didn't pay you that much? Oh, my. Okay. Those guys are like, we're going to get all of the money. You don't realize this, but we're going to get all of the money. It's either from you or somewhere else. All right. We're keeping our eye on that job security section. All right. Oh, yo, RB Leipzig. How you doing? Where did they finish? Seventh in the Bundesliga. Got Europe by one on the goal difference, though, so that's sick. Hey, I, don't have a, I know I don't have a Continental Pro, but, like, I, I will apply to that job. I will apply to RB Leipzig. We're going to put a job application in. Leipzig's very, very wealthy. We'd be able to contend at the top of a major European league. Our goal is to get to the top of the game as fast as possible. You know, we're playing it like real life. We want to climb. I'd love to take a crack at another season with St. Etienne, but if RB Leipzig thinks that we're we're the best person to take our uh, take them forward, we'd be in Europe next season. Oh, we already we already got our Continental Pro. Uh, I mean, we don't have it. We have a Continental A license, but we're working on the Continental Pro license. We are working on the Continental Pro coaching license. All right, Laval on the road against Nîmes Olympique, and it's Nîmes Olympique that will be playing for promotion in the playoff final. Best manager of moments like this. Remember your second season for Pirates. We improved this summer, maybe changed some things in the town. Yeah, I know. We, we bottled the league in the first season with the Pirates as well. We just... Doesn't mean it doesn't hurt, and we bottled the league here a lot more than we did that time. Come on. All right, Mamadou Koulibaly, I'm putting you on the transfer list. And offering you out again. Ngani Kumalo is on the loan list. We'll just wait on that. And then Kevin and Babu. Uh, we're going to put him on the transfer list. No immediate interest. Nobody sniffing around the goods like, yo, Mbabu, what's up? Oh, I'm Matisse Mugu. Got to move him, too. Will, thank you so much for the prime, dude. Thank you for supporting the stream. Uh, Matisse Mugu, we're going to 
Try that again. I'd take like 1.4 million for him. German clubs don't have owners, but that was like locked in place after RB, I think. Because Leipzig was taken over like probably 12 years ago now by Red Bull. I don't remember exactly how it worked, but I remember that there was like an exception for Leipzig, either by the fact the rules weren't tight enough or whatever. PSG won the Coupe de France. Yeah. Ah, my team conceded the fewest set piece goals in the season. Well, that is no consolation at all. There's a busy season in the transfer market. You're telling me, dude, I had to build a whole team. You know, RB stands for Red Bull. Do you know it actually doesn't? Signing of the season was uh, Lalama Bad Boy. For 220k had 21 appearances four goals five assists and an average 7.15 whereas disappointed we only won promotion unfortunately good results came too late in the season to prevent it being a campaign of underachievement. awesome awesome yay 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 What was the goal of the year? Uh, it was Matisse Amugu in a 9-1 win in the Coupe de France. It was the match that Gasson scored uh, six goals in against Vendée. Can we just admit RB stands for Red Bull? I mean, I, I don't... Like, that's an insane goal. I don't think anybody would argue that, like, obviously they made it RB so that you'd think of Red Bull. But it also just like factually stands for Ross and Bull Sport. Like I don't, but I don't like. Can we just agree? Like I think everybody already agrees that it stands for Red Bull. Knows that it stands for Red Bull, right? Like it's you know. So it's I don't, I don't know if there's an argument to be made there. Um, third promotion for Zealand Chin and a promotion specialist out here. He gets teams up to the next league. That he does. By leaving the club, I'm. we're going to keep our eyes on the job market for sure. We have an application out to Rosenball Sport Leipzig. Leipzig. Uh, I, I'm going to pull at Jose Mourinho, but have you seen my trophy cabinet recently? I think it, I, I win plenty of trophies. We just didn't win that one. Uh, are you expecting to receive a uh, – yeah, if he wants to leave to Bristol City, I won't stand in uh, – Bristol City want to make a big money offer for Alvaro Rodriguez. I will do that deal, dude. I will do that deal. Yeah. Rassenball Sport, Grassball Sport, Leipzig. Yeah. We may get an interview. I'd be really surprised if we actually um, – I'd be really surprised if we actually got the job. Shelter up the top selling jersey, then Alvaro somehow, then Vanden Bowman, Efcon, and Gasson. Okay, uh, ticket price is going up. Cool. That's great news. The board is provided. Oh, chairperson Patrick Salvador has injected $39 million into the club. Got it. Understood. And that puts us at a positive 36 million. Okay, so we're going to increase the junior coaching, right? We're going to buy the ground. I, I don't think we're working with that kind of money, but I will take more scouts if you're allowing them. If you're not, fair. Uh, yeah, so it's really just, uh, really just that. We need to increase our the quality of our junior coaching to help develop those Incredible St. Etienne Wonder Kids. Thank you, Patrick Salvador, for throwing some cash around, dude. I appreciate it.
Uh, the Euros are going down. Who's in? Austria, France, Georgia, Scotland, England, Greece, Spain, Wales, Belgium, Netherlands, Norway, Sweden. That's a tough group. Croatia, Germany, Slovenia, Ukraine, Ireland, Portugal, Romania, Switzerland, Denmark, Italy, Poland, Serbia. Nice. Nice. I don't think there's, like, any huge omissions. Um, Ireland's there. Georgia's there. They've they've sauntered their way in. Nor yeah, Erling Holland and Norway have actually made it to the tournament, which is incredible. Uh Croatia question mark? Oh, there they are. No Serbia. Serbia is probably the most surprised is Switzerland? I didn't say Switzerland, did I? Yo, what happened to Switzerland? Oh, no, they're, so, they're totally there. I'm just blind. Okay, they're literally right there. Serbia made it to the playoff, or they're also there? Serbia's in... Okay, so Serbia and Switzerland are there. So, like I was saying, both those teams are in the tournament. Uh, Czechia missed it on goal difference. Hungary, Belarus, Finland, Bulgaria, Bo Bosnia, and Herzegovina. Croatia had to go through the freaking playoff. They finished behind Austria and Slovenia. Norway had to go through the playoff. Israel and Iceland both made the playoff with a ton of points. Turkey and Slovakia both made that playoff as well. Uh, qualifying playoff, we had... Oh, Croatia beat Bosnia and Herzegovina. Czechia beat Hungary. Norway beat North Macedonia 3-2. to two, And Iceland beat Malta because, of course, Malta made it. So that set up a final of Croatia, Czechia, and Norway, Iceland, Croatia, and Norway won. So Iceland nearly made it back to the uh, to the Euros. I wonder if Shelter, uh, Shelter Up's got to be in that, uh, right? Shelter Up's in the Norwegian team, Ole Andreas. What do you think is the worst European national team you could qualify for the Euros? Only European national team I've managed that, like, wasn't a guarantee before was, um, I literally have a dude on the Serbian team. How did I miss that? Uh, we spent enough money. Um, we're getting left behind by our rivals. We're not prepared to risk being overtaken by our rivals. We'll allow a suitable increase to immediate effect. Brilliant. Junior coaching budget, uh, and it'll, re it'll reach an excellent level. Awesome. 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 So we have excellent youth facilities, excellent academy coaching, excellent youth uh, recruitment. Is that the highest level? I can't remember. <laughs> Been a while. Oh, dude, Quivili Rua might get relegated to the third division with a sugar daddy. That's crazy. They lost the first leg of the relegation playoff. That's actually nuts. Quavili Rouen, the team that offered us a job, we took St. Etienne instead. Exceptional? Okay, no, state-of-the-art's for facilities. State-of-the-art is for, like, training and youth facilities, but for youth training and youth recruitment, there's one level past excellent, I thought. I just didn't remember what the name of it was. And uh, you guys did, so it's exceptional. What we're looking for is to get to exceptional. Oh, Robert Soldericus, baby. Robert Soldericus. 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 Mackenzie Cars. So this is just previously scouted players that have been set for release. Jordy McKingo. Potential relegation release clause target. He is a left back center back. That's quite good, actually. From Kent Azaro, DR Congo is EU for us. That's a real competent player. I am I'm liking this guy. I'm gonna go make a new short list. That is Target acquired. Uh. All right. We're going target acquired. Jordy McKengo. 
Elia Aqu- Aquaviva. Dude, it sounds like a terrible water bottle brand, but all right. Uh, Abdul Suse, excellent young striker from Mozambique. Don't think he's a star for us, the level that we're at. He's also at Benfica, but he is on the good list. I don't know if I want to move him. He's not He's not like a star. We could loan him in for, our, for a season, but we'll see. Raxum got destroyed. I heard it was 3-1, ah, 4-1. Hey, they were living the dream, though, man. They were living the dream. They had the lead for 13 minutes. But, yeah, FA Cup, Blackburn, through to the next round. They're not contributing to, <laughs> to everything. In the final match of the AFCON Asian Cup knockouts extravaganza, it's still Senegal up 1-0 from the fourth minute against Ivory Coast who slipped into the knockouts as the last team in despite losing 4-0 to Equatorial Guinea in their own tournament, which is just objectively insane that that happened. Axel Valentin from Toulouse. This guy uh, plays the whole back line. Got it. That's cool. Well, you know, we'll, we'll keep an eye on old Axel Valentin. Rudiger Ashnitz. He's interested in alone. Ball-winning midfielder, but also like a striker. You know what that means? This dude is like the greatest pressing forward of all time. Adilson. Oh, he doesn't want to play for me at all. I was kind of hoping this would be one of the guys that we could... He'd be like, yes, I want to play for you. But he didn't say that. In fact, he said the opposite. He said specifically, I don't. He saw our, our, our scout in the crowd, and he's like, you do realize I would never want to play there, right? And then we went, well, that's harsh. I mean, you haven't even. He's like, no, I would never want to play there. And I'm like, ah, thank you for letting me know. Matias Palacios. Ooh, he, wait, wait, a little slow. Wage, obviously, is high, but this dude's playing in Saudi Arabia at Al Ain. Minimum fee release clause of $9 million, uh, to foreign clubs. So take $9 million to get Matias Palacios. He's silky, man. It's a silky player. Silky player. Clancy Bitten Villar. I'm sorry. You're right back with nine stamina. I'm just never going to like you. Even if you were on my team, I'd be like, ah. Oh, with the 11 jumping reach. Nope. George Armstrong. Unknown what his transfer interest would be. But if I had $38.5 million, I could find out. The guy's very good. Curious. Pickle, thank you so much for the four months. Any tips from going to championship to prem him in a loop of getting promoted and then going straight back down? Loans and free players. Premier League's hardest league in the world. You need to loan from the best Premier League teams or for other top teams in the world so that you can get quality players that you don't have to buy and then sign old guys that just ran out of a contract with the bigger teams and bring them in. But it's always about the loans. Throw the entire budget at Yvonne Alves. Uh, Hassan Abdi. What if they don't want to play for you? Will they? I mean, that's kind of like a, it's a non-starter, right? But you're in the Premier League. All right. You're in the Premier League. There are there are, there are a ton of guys that want to play for you in the Premier League. So now we need a keeper too. Yeah, we really need a like a starting goalkeeper. That's what we need. Makias. Dude stays a good player. Not interested in playing for us. He's like, dude, I, I don't see the vision. I, I don't want to. 
It was spend a year with you. Well, let me tell you. I'm waiting for the, there, there should be a large collection of other wonder kids around here. Refrosser, how is he considered three stars? A very wide range in the three stars my scouts are handed out. Seems to be some something of a misunderstanding about the actual quality of the team here. All right, Benedetti. Now that we've uh, now that we've progressed as a club, not quite as interested. Now, I'm sorry, Luke. Sorry, Luke. It's it's just not meant to be. Carlos Cuesta from Luton Town. Yeah, yeah, I know. I was into him last year, but he's still prohibitively expensive so chill those guys don't like big matches carney chukwameka is asking for crazy money but honestly could i deliver that for austrian international carney chukwameka probably Definitely worth a look. I don't think anybody's made the move yet, so we don't have to make our decision right now, but he's definitely a guy I could see ending up on our team next year. Oh, so this is just more guys whose contract ran out that we're now being subjected to. We used to scout. Somebody that I used to scout. <laughs> How you guys doing? The Gambia, specifically. As soon as he gets released, his wage demands will be way lower. Yeah. There might be a team that comes in and goes for Carney like before he gets released, in which case we then just have to make the decision on the spot whether we want to go for him or not. Which is, I realize, the thought process that justifies the AI doing that a little more in the game. But who wants to admit that out loud? Anwar Ait El Haj. A lot going on in that name. Uh, Tice Delinga, nomadic striker. I mean, he's good size, good smarts, very excruciatingly well rounded player. Uh, he's unhappy. He's been transfer listed, and I am going to throw Ty Stalinga on target acquired. We are curious in adding Ty Stalinga to the team because, my goodness, I need another striker that's, like, actually on my team. Now, we'll check. We've checked the job offers once a week. We're just, we just have our 100-man scouting centers popped up, so we're hitting that right now. Thomas Bielan. Said, oh, I'm interested in a move. I'm like, ah, cool. Oh, Zion Suzuki. Dubious interest, but good size, good mental skills, good shot stopper. I am going to go with good, but not target acquired. Zeno Braca. Natan Skita. Well, he's unhappy, and he's cheap, and he's available. The best type of ability. Availability. Deo Gracias Basinga. Now, that's a sick name. Um, but no. Matty Diara, no. Okay, Valentin Braun. That's a shame. So I don't think you're actually... Well, you could be really good, but I... I don't... We need good now. We don't need good five years from now. Oh, he's potentially interested. All right, well, that's a legit, I'm thinking like world-class type uh, wingback right here on the Calvin Ramsey side, and he would not count. He'd count as an EU. Andre Klimenko. He's at Al Fati. Yeah, which is why his, his wage is really high, but. Uh, that, that work rate and uh, stamina is kind of crazy. This dude just missiles up and down the wing all match. He's got a good cross on him. Definitely a competent player that can step in and, you know, you can deputize him as a center back, certainly in a pinch.
But he's close to his full potential, but he's he's very good. Um, we're going to go ahead and add him to target acquired. I don't know. We're not going to blow our whole budget on one dude, though. Obviously, we're not going to blow our whole budget on one dude. That would be stupid. Why would we do that? But also, it's a fun thought. Like, it's always a fun thought to be like, well, yeah, that guy could be on the team. Now, uh, he's a player. Now, now there, there is a player. Luis Torres from Zolo Siwana. There, there's a player at a position of no need whatsoever. But that is a legit player. All five, five of him. Whole budget's what? Five mil? Now we got like 26 in the old budget. Now the interest is Arsenal. So there's that thing. Um, great passer mentally, just a monster. He's got that quick change of direction to open up passing lanes too. adaptability, professional mentality. There's a lot of things to like about Luis Torres. Um, maybe this is the first guy we start negotiating with to try and bring him in. He is one of the four foreign players, but we do have spots. So like for a player that we consider good, we do have spots, you know? So we have one foreign spots on Bravo, one's on Whitworth. So like if we remove Whitworth and then we have one on Stefan. We remove Stefan. We've got two. Who's the other one? Oh, it's uh, Ramsey. So Ramsey and Bravo were already like locked in. Those are two first team guys that are foreign. This guy's worth five million. Yeah, but it's, look, it's not a question. We're not doing a club builder, right? This isn't a question of is it worth it? It obviously is. It's how can we best use our money to improve our team? Right, and we have Lorenzo Sage, we have Elaine Diallo. We are letting go of FCON, so we're, you know there's maybe a bit of a hole in the midfield, but finish the report. The report's done. Um, the report is done on him. Open play key passes, third in league AMX at 20 years old, got into the Mexican national team. All right, we're going to kick off the negotiations. I'm going to go with 3.5 million. And then after 50 appearances, we'll pay out a 1.5 mil. And then we reach the final at Coupe de France, you get a mil. I'm going to remove that for right now. They want it uh, submitted for further consideration. All right. They're going to try and go to Arsenal. And if Arsenal don't want him, which he doesn't have Arsenal type potential. So hopefully if Arsenal don't want him, then we can be like, ah, -ha! <laughs> oh man. Jack Harrison, yeah. Um, why? What shortlist is he on now? I thought I removed him from the freaking. He's not on the end of contract shortlist anymore. He's very much under contract where he is. Uh, Marin Pius. Isn't this guy? We just sold that guy. Why is he previously scouted? I was like, yeah, I scouted him. He was on my team. Sold that guy over there. Um, you are an inside forward wing guy i know couldn't tell you why just looking at your attributes it makes me want to throw up so i'm just not gonna add you that's cool but that's all right with you i feel nauseous just looking at you so i'm gonna go i'm gonna leave okay that's not enough han noah masingo Come on, give me one more great poll. Not just the, not just these uh, updates. Give me one more great poll on like, yes, this guy. 
Fabian Sintonsi is a right back, a Frenchman that is 32 years old. He's leaving Antwerp at the end of next season. Extremely doubtful that he'd be interested, but he actually could fit our team as like this Ken and Zaro side actually had some good players on it. Oh, Matt Smith! Hey, dude. Hope you're doing well. Hope your save's going well. Guy's a big FM player. Gave me a shirt after a Wales national team match. Still one of like the coolest things ever. Ah, we'll keep you on this short list. How's, how's life at Livingston? <laughs> a friend of the stream, Matt Smith. Wales International. Not had the best save in terms of his development here, but that's all right. What's increasing the junior coaching budget do? Helps your youth players develop more. So youth recruitment gets you high potential. Youth coaching gets you, they're closer to the potential when they come out. So they, you know, they, which is a very important part of it, right? Because if they're super far away from their potential, then who cares? It doesn't even matter. So you really want to raise them in tandem. Uh, Isco is retiring after one season at Bovai Ois. How do you do? I mean, that was a weird train. He played 15 matches at a 6.75 rating, and they finished 15th and got relegated. Well, what a season for Isco, baby. Wow. What a player. <laughs> what a season for Isco. Carried them to relegation. Just soaking up their entire wage budget in the fourth division of France. Only to go down anyways. Tough out there. It's, it's tough out there. Walter Benitez. Really liked Walter last time, but. He didn't want to come on loan. They did some weird contract thing, and I'm like, hmm. Yeah, they went public with our $5 million offer for Torres. We'll see how See how that does. Knock, brother. Thank you so much for the, uh, for the prime, dude. Appreciate you supporting the stream. Enjoy the bacon. Enjoy the emotes. Night, Peter. Oh, well, no. I don't know. No, not not quite. All right, Mbabu. I'm happy here. You may not come to a decision. Um I made it clear no longer my plans. Betches was entirely open leaving new pastures. Um I can't afford for you to be I need you to make a decision. We can't afford to be choosy about where you go, so please get it done. Right, there's a clear problem in the dressing room. Truth is we can't afford your salary. That's not true. You're no longer part of my plans. So it's time to move on. I'm going to do the same with Mamadou Koulibaly. He's okay with it. Cool. You just need to get some team's attention. See if you now, now that you guys are interested and actively looking for a move. You know, I'm actually not going to move him. He's just such a decent rotation player. All right, chill out with the nine million. All right, I, I will go up to four. And two, but like, okay, all right, all right, all right, five and two and a half. I'll give you six million up front. Six point two five for Luis Torres, hard bargain, but we're like right in the middle of the five to seven and a half that they said you'd be you'd be costing me. So we've negotiated pretty hard. They left the meeting in a huff. All, all the way from Scotland, all I want is meow. Nothing crazy, just a basic meow. <gasps> no. <clears throat> all the way from Scotland. Like you didn't just log on to your computer. I'm not putting me meowing on the internet. I don't want you people to have that power over me. What are you talking about? Ivory Coast have a pen getting checked by VAR. AFCON, no simple games ever. Senegal scored in the fourth minute. You knew something weird was going down. You knew something weird was going down.
Wait, the dude said rude. You're a sausage. I wish, man. A little spicy. Everybody would love me. Sounds sick. I would love to be a sausage. Sounds great. Hens given? Referee Pierre Acho must have his signal his signal is here. He indicates he will check an earlier penalty claim by Ivory Coast. <gasps> and the penalty has been given according to chat. Stonewall pen. Extra times beckoning. I wonder who's gonna take it. I they just so they they sub Sebastian Allaren in the 72nd minute. That's be, that'd be my guess. That would be my guess. It would be Sebastian Allaire. Frank Cassie's a good penalty taker, no? Who else is out there? Frank Cassie's a good penalty taker. But they took those guys out. These are the guys that are in now, right? Or no? Starting lineup. No, 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 no. So they brought in Cassie is taking. Okay. Frank Cassie is taking it. He just came in like 10 minutes ago. Home nation penalty to tie it. Edward Mindy just got a yellow. Mindy must have been doing something heinous because Senegal's goalkeeper just got a yellow right before the, the pen. Or maybe he's the guy that gave it away. Edouard Mendy against Frank Kessie. Can Ivory Coast equalize in their own AFCON? Yes, they can. It's come through. Frank Kessie scores and it's 1-1. Senegal and Ivory Coast. An extra time is now beckoning between two of Africa's premier nations. In the round of 16. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Les Elephants, Ivory Coast. Frank Cassie. The team without a freaking coach, dude. The team without a coach. The team that quite literally fired its coach. Still going. Can you imagine if they go on and like win the whole tournament now? Just rolling, rolling solo dolo, like no coach. All right, I'll give you 6.25 and 1.5 after. Okay, per league appearance, so you went 620,000. No. After 10 international appearances, no. I'll give you 2,006.5. Thank you. That took forever. Oh, who's, in who's in charge of these elephants? Nobody knows, man. Nobody knows. I will right, we'll do a little escalating here, attacking midfielder, but I'll send you on the French language thing. Okay. Louise Torres. Salary after club matches? No, dude. You're, the plan is for you to play. Uh, relegation release clause is seven, but we'll lock it there. Um, he's not asking for crazy money, honestly. He's being very reasonable with his salary demands. Those guys coming from uh, Mexico sometimes can be entirely unreasonable with their salary demands, but we're adding yet another talented player to Saint at the end. Oh, we got a good couple of updates on relegation release clauses from our scouts. I like 
The problem is you have to have somebody scouted pretty well to know about it. Like, not pretty well. You have to have somebody scouted tremendously for releg like relegation release clause. Um, active relegation release clause. You, like, add that in there, but anybody at all. So this is everybody we know that has a relegation release clause active. See, there's not a lot of guys that we have scouted well enough that also happen to have a relegation release clause there. Um, you know, he's not one of the goalkeepers that we'd be like, hell yeah. Shane Lavery. Well, that's a hardworking striker, you know? He's all about effort. And I'm all about, how about no? Velden Hodja. Jordy McKingo. Oh yeah, McKingo's the guy that we uh the guy that we like. The guy that like st walks into the team as a starting left back. We're going to go ahead and make that move now. I don't want to mess around Jordy McKingo cuz we desperately need a left back that's not Jacques Sakome or Liam Scales. We need Jordy McKingo. Doesn't have any uh, mental issues, right? Very one-footed, he's a left back. I don't I don't care. His passing's 12. It's fine. Good athlete, not stupid, plays defense, gets forward. Noah Zara, thank you so much for the prime. It's a guy that we, I, we already had him on our targets list. I've just decided that we should go for him now. Rodrigo Macedo. It's a low relegation release clause, and that would be because he's not good. True story. Do we have any high value guys on our team? No joke, I would sell him so fast for that amount of money. Anybody want Andreas Shelder up? He was so aggressively okay this season. We spent $20 million to sign him. He is, however, a wonder boy. Would he get mad? He'd be very interested in speaking to other clubs. What are you, upset? You're not upset. He's just like, no, I'd be interested. David Twitchfield, thank you for the prime, dude. Dude, would it uh, toss me a cool $50 million for a shelter up? I would be interested. Yeah, he was um, okay. I mean, like, he had some great moments and won us a couple matches, but he also you know, he wasn't reliably sensational. Uh, but he's the guy on our team by far that gives us really nice value if we, like, move him. Now, I am interested in the people that are interested in Alvaro Rodriguez. They have my attention because he really struggled. So we're going to offer him out and see what they say. Offer them out and see what's up, you know? All right. Uh, Shelly, I'm going to go ahead and offer you out, too. I'm... McKingo, more interest in joining a bunch of other teams, but I'm here first, so I'm going to pop you on regular starter. You don't think you're a starter here, but I, I do, Jordy. I do. Uh, relegation release clause, 2.5 million. You're not going to play in the, you're not going to play in the league below us. Easy negotiating, Jordy McKingo. That was a big deal, but with the relegation release clause, we were able to lower it a little bit. So him and Torres were addressing a quality issue by signing Torres, who's got a lot of quality, particularly as a passer. McKengo addresses the left-back issue. We are not going to be the only team probably in for that by the end of it. Oh, do not sell him. I mean, I'm, I'm offering him out. If nobody offers an amount that we like, nobody offers an amount that we like. But if somebody gives me $50 million, I can use that to run the rest of this. So Coventry and Club Leon in Mexico are the teams that have offered him jobs. And also, oh, they accepted those. Okay. 
Like our contract had good value. I think we'd be favorites in the clubhouse. We're giving him really, really, really good value. Uh, Paulo Fernandez of Cape Verde, no. Aaron Ramsey, still good. Don't want to burn a non-EU spot on it. Christian Kwan, I don't know why they think he's bad. I think Christian Kwan's a very serviceable player. I don't know why they think he's not good. Plus seven minutes in the Senegal match at 1-1. There have been so many late goals in AFCON. Don't count it out. An Ivory Coast winner to break hearts. Ooh. So the relegation and promotion playoff happened at the same time. Wow. Quavili Rouen just got planted. They had a tycoon takeover and went down. They had a tycoon takeover and went down in the relegation playoff. A uh, yikes. The recently relegated Saint at the end. Uh, when? Active relegation release clause. Oh, so that's just a glitch. That's cool. Anybody else have their release clause accidentally activated? Hey, Stefan, nice job. One goalkeeper of the season. So how did that happen? Uh, okay, head coach of the year. Um, How did the Mets coach not make it onto this list, dude? Although for the Nimes guy, what's his name? Olivier. Olivier Pantaloni, David, uh, David Sanchez. And then Christoph Kashili. I might actually win head coach of the year, which I don't deserve at all. Franco Vandenboomen gets a team of the year bonus. He was in the team of the year. So is Zach Steffen. Wild that Zach Steffen's there. Just absolutely insane that Zach Steffen is there, but okay. You know what else is insane? A relegation release clause being act. Oh, I guess it's active because we got relegated last year. Is that it's still active? Is that what's happening? I'm overreacting because I misunderstood the rule. That was active last year. Got to be. Has to be. Yeah, I think I'm in the wrong there. Because like, he was on the team uh, when they got relegated last year. Okay. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. It's just still active. I don't know why you would want to... Uh, I don't know why you would want to leave, obviously, because we're going back up. But... Jacques Ecolmier is free to leave for $2.8 I just actually like... Jacques Ecomier. Might be active until like two weeks into the transfer window when it realizes. Yeah, does like getting relegated and going back up cancel the relegation release clause? That'd be interesting. That's like a finer point of. Uh, finer point of the legal, you know, the legal uh, tomfoolery. Final point of the legal, legal Tom Fuller. All right, Cooler Bali and Kevin Mbabu we're going to make available. We appreciated Mbabu being old man cover at right back for a season, but we don't need old man cover. Uh, okay. Yeah, I look, you keep talking about TS like Karlsruhe, right? You guys keep mentioning that. Oh, Ghana and Senegal are both open. <laughs> nah, it's uh, it's not a World Cup year. But Ghana and Senegal both fired their uh, their coach. Senegal has a draw with Togo in World Cup qualifying. Do, 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 do. Quivili Rouen fired their coach. That is unsurprising firing of the year award Burnley and Bournemouth both fired their coach after getting relegated from the prem we could continue our let's get teams promoted thing and play our way into the prem so euros here yeah yeah the euros teams are uh called up 
We have guys on international duty with that. Shelter up and uh, Lekovic. Now we got to coach Ghana at the last World Cup. It's a lot of fun. Um, Khaled Arfawi. Sure. He's unambitious. This guy's never going to reach his potential, but he might reach something that gives us money, which is cool. So guys that are leaving, uh, Fcon, Bakiralu, Lukadin, um, Maven, uh, I just see this, I guess. He's like, yeah, dude, I'll take some cash. Sick. Ange Lego. Lego. <laughs> uh, not interested after being transfer listed. See, I didn't remember that, so. Bradley Wah. So this is all the uh, B team guys. So I'm thinking we just start triggering some extensions. We actually do want to have like a competent B team. Yeah, I really feel like building a B team. So like if we could transferring contracts, um, handles incoming offers for youth team players, find and sign young players to the future. Julien Fournier, I finalized them, but you can go and hunt them. Contracts. Uh, congratulations. I have delegated contract negotiations in the youth team. Sorry, in the St. Etienne 2 team, Theo. First team guys were losing Fcon and Luca Dane. And Claudio Ramos, but he can he can ride. And Bubakar Fall, who is the other goalkeeper that we used. At one point this season. What a fun time we had with goalkeepers. Ah, fun memories. Freaking Claudio Ramos. No, Branco's staying, dude. He's still under contract. He's not, uh, there's no, there's no Branco here. No Branco Vandenbaum and just Fcon Bakiralu and look at Dane's retiring at the end of the year, so. Which is fair. It's time. He has outlived his usefulness. All right, show the recommended players. Gaston Alvarez. You have my attention. Miguel Almario, 6.6 6 million for Miguel Almario, and he is... Well, I just need somebody with friggin' straight line speed. And we do not have that. We never freaking have that. There's a false nine drops in between. The, tons of flair. Very, very fun. Okay, so... Definitely going on target acquired list is somebody... You know, like, I don't know what kind of money we're going to come into. We might come into some really good money. Uh, but the signing of Luis Torres makes a ton of sense. Very smart, shifty, uh, very dangerous, ball-delivering, uh, opposition-opening, good mindset player. Uh, for $6.5 with an, uh, another $2 million after he plays 50 league games for St. At the end. Uh, the deal is done. Luis Torres. Yeah, he's not a you. So we'll have one non-EU spot left. But well, we did not want to hesitate with... Uh, so no no interest in either one of them. Well, there, were, uh, there were multiple clubs that were sniffing around Alvaro. All right, uh, I'm, not, I'm not trying to go nuclear to move either of those guys. I'm not. We have, we have our two transfer deals. We just did one of them. Torres will join us. When the transfer window begins, and then the uh, left back, hopefully, hopefully he's gonna he's gonna pick us soon. How about Shelly up top? She's not a great finisher. 
is 12 finishing. So Ramsey was better. He wasn't as good of a passer. Claudio Ramos has retired. Good riddance, bro. All right. Uh, transfer targets, request suggestion, right wing. Mamelody Sundowns, Yerson Shakon. Highly doubt that guy's good enough. No, Buklal is, that. that's the right speed. That's what we're talking about. And Akin, Akin Kunmi Aimu. Well, he looks fast. He looks very fast. I am not hating. Giuseppe Picasso. Oscar Felinius. Sounds like a disease of some kind. And Jakob Bryn Larson. I guess. Looks like he's in the neighborhood. Okay, next suggestion. Maybe a star or no, striker. The biggest hole in the team, Cabello Mokoena. Bro, straight up, actually, great shout. Not an all-around great athlete, but his mentals are really surprisingly good. He's very either-footed. This dude can finish. He can finish off moves very well. He's interesting. Yeah, I know he's cheap, too. Let me, let me see what... I'm not worried about his wage demands because he's coming from South Africa. I'm more worried about his playing time. So say we're interested. Uh, yeah, that's okay. That's the issue. He doesn't merit that level of playing time. Yeah, he's expecting to be a star, which is the only my only issue with him. Edan Toklamati. Toklamati is sick. Edan Toklamati is sick. Matthew Mullen, 20-year-old Englishman. Might be available for loan if he's at Fulham and is clearly a physical freak, so... Mullen can boogie, and I'm interested in center backs. Abraham Del Moral. Adrian De La Fuente. A little expensive for my taste. Ben Worrell. And of course, the goalkeepers, Geronimo Porta. Dude, every he's so good at the recommendations, and then we get to goalkeepers, and it's just like, here are three bad goalkeepers, by the way. Just in case you are interested in bad goalkeepers. Like, oh, how did you? How did you know? You know? Uh, how did you know that I wanted a bad goalkeeper? That's crazy. You just read my mind. We're looking at Suzuki, Ahamador, or Gautier Larsonier. Wasn't he on our team? Yeah, we just sold him for 4.4. Zion Suzuki. Peace. Ivor Pandor. He's fine. He's also 10 million. I'm not paying 10 million for eh, it's a marginal improvement. A little larger than marginal though. 12 million dollar relegation release clause on Tyne Van Ingelglom. Wait, relegation. Oh, it's just a release clause in general. Did they get relegated? They did not. I'm not hallucinating. Okay. Guess that's just there on my recruiting report, like my scouting report, anyways. Uh, okay. Oh, how I wish I had the money for you, Juan, because you are a world class player. 
You want to play for me, and I think that's really sweet of you. Maybe their B team got relegated. That'd be a really funny, uh, that feels like a glitch. That feels like a glitch, if that's what it was. Oh, I asked for a goalkeeper recommendation. We're scouting him. World Cup African qualifying. Yeah, it's going to be a tough life for Lorenzo Sage. Curtin continues to leave Stefan out. Yeah, I mean, I know he won goalkeeper of the year in the French second division, but have you ever watched him play? As he was, uh, you know, we uh, let, me, let me just put it this way. If he didn't make some of the mistakes that he made, I think we would be celebrating a league championship right now. Check the Jobs Center right now. RB Leipzig's the only job that we are head over heels about. That's true. Now a lot of uh, sizable jobs have opened up. Cantazaro got relegated from Syria. Really no top five jobs or major South American jobs have opened up at all. Willem got relegated. Like, Yeah, it's um, interesting. Koulibaly. Go ahead, Eagles target for 1.4 million. That sounds great. I did not know Coventry was, oh, they got promoted through the freaking playoff. When did that happen? What day did that happen? Okay, it's, it, ha it happened May, May 21st. Oh, that sucks. He deliberated greatly and decided playing in the Premier League. With <sighs> but barely, though. But, like, barely. We gave him so much more money, too. Sad day. Very. Um, selling team salary contribution. Al Shamal. Oh, come on. You're in Qatar. I'm not giving you the wage thing. Well, I go down to 1.2 million, but you have to pay Mamadou Koulibaly's wage. Wage demands are in excess of what they are prepared to pay. That's entirely fair. We'll try a zero. We can look at Alves, but I mean, the leagues still haven't changed over. That'll happen on the 24th. Like, the leagues still haven't changed over. I mean, everybody and their mother's interested, but. 23 to 35. Uh, we won the league with Knock Breda, got promoted, got the job at St. Etienne in the in League Dua, took over a giant that had just gotten relegated. We got them promoted, but we lost the league in an incredible bottle where we got two points from our final four matches and lost the league by a point. It was very painful. Happened on stream today. Uh, and now we are right now looking, unless we get the Leipzig job, we will be staying here and figuring it out. PSG won Ivan Elvish. Well, that would be annoying. But 23 to 35, and All right, we're going to stall out. But it's 23 to 35 as an updated asking price, which is obviously a lot more reasonable. But... I, I don't think he offers that world-beating amount. What's driven? It's just really high determination. Uh, driven, driven's just really high determination. Lekovic is now fluent in French. I didn't win head coach of the year. That's ah, fine. I didn't deserve it. Um... We do need a left back, one of the holes in the team that just exists. So now we're short on that. Abdul Kante on loan from Swa at um, Tromso. Living a good life. All right, I got to go to transfers, general manager. We're going to 
Try and find some initial targets. Saudi Fahad Al-Balawi. Interesting. Santiago Montiel. Just going to have quality going forward. You get a wing back uh, coming out of the Argentine leagues. Carlos Romero. Okay, let's check the rest of our short list here. We go loans, or like left back. Christopher Lund. You hanging out? God, eight million. Absolutely not. Clinton Mola. Cabini also absolutely not. Okay. Glad we're able to clean that up. Oh, that was tough. I had already filed away left back as having been taken care of. So Musa Diara can do it. He can also play center back. Oh, yeah, Musa Diara was the guy that we were thinking we'd want before. He's been an absolute stormer at uh at Partizan. He's not interested. Well, I guess it's because he moved too recently. We're in a tough spot. In a tough spot with the left backs. Gaston is also very, very expensive. Very, very, very expensive. What's that report? From the Stone Age? That dude's so bad. Uh... Okay, yeah, looks okay. Please have some sort of European nationality, brother. Italian, beautiful. Alan Matero. Curious. Kamajan Katash. I believe Turkish is, yeah. He would count as EU, wouldn't count against our non EU stuff. Just got to be scouting harder for the left backs. Got to be scouting harder. Now that, that spot's gaping. Did I get promoted? Yeah, we're going up to legal. Playing PSG and the like. But we did not win the league in a tragic turn of events, so. Yvonne is a shadow striker and Shelter Up is a deep lying forward. Uh, I mean the, yeah, that would that would work. But we would also be blowing our whole budget on getting Yvonne Alves. And we wouldn't have anything for a goalkeeper or a left back. And we want to upgrade our wing play as well. Like Rodier cannot be a starter going into the next you know, going into the next level. He, he it doesn't work. So Augustine Guy. Okay, Wilson Odobert. Now we're talking. Was this guy, um, you guys just got relegated. So did he have a relegation release? <laughs> he did. It was 25.5 million for Wilson Odoba. That's the type of upgraded wing I'm looking to, I'm looking to create. By 25 is a little rich. A little rich for the blood. He's good, good. Yeah, no, he's got he's got the game for sure. You're most like, oh, I'm not worried about staying up. I want to be able to, we want to be able to take a, another step. We want, you know, we want to be competing around European places this season. We we matched up with a couple of teams in, um, you know, in league all this season, and we matched up pretty favorably. We played pretty well against league opposition with the team that we already had together. Surprised you don't believe in Rodier for legal. I, I just feel like we need more. Uh, than, like, he's a good guy off the bench.
for Legon, but I, I feel like I need more from from my wing. I uh, like at least a shelter up type player. By Mbappe, I mean, I think they'll give him to us on loan. He is. I've heard he's disgruntled at PSG, so he might be able to swoop in. You know, I'm gonna fly down. <laughs> Crazy Jordy, though. Thank you. Um, I hope I was able to catch you up well enough. Thank you for supporting this stream. Be honest, you just don't like wingers. No, I don't. They don't have a lot of talent relative to. Uh, <laughs> they don't have a lot of talent relative to other players in the field, so wingers usually bother me. Yeah, there is Ethan and Bappe. That's true. He's not bad, though. I sell shelter up. No, we offered him out. And nobody was particularly interested, although we did just get perfect. Yeah. 1.2 million from Amadou Koulibaly. Nice. Okay. We're going to hire an intermediary. Uh, the clubs are going to consider a priority target, but there is interest. Do I want to set an intermediary deadline? Yes. We're also going to keep offering out Mbabo for zero. He didn't fit into the team. Ilaix Moraba getting an offer for three point eight million. Yeah, like what freaking amount of money would he want? Leipzig's owned the guy for the last couple of years. Now Slavia Prague's coming in. We could outmuscle Slavia Prague. Silva's a right back, right? Yeah. Always liked Elias Moraba, but he's not really a wing player. He would round out the rest of our midfield. We'd probably switch to central midfielders. Oh no, he will he'll want he'll want a lot of wage, but we also have a lot of wage room, so don't worry about that. Uh, let's let's check it out. What was it? Three point eight. I'll go two point five. Can't do the international appearance thing because he is from Guinea and he will totally hit that. Decline to give an immediate answer. 4.6 is right on my line. I'm by no means I'm sure I'm going to do that. Only in the market for the right player right now. Uh, enlist the help of an agent to help sell Mbabu. Looking quick deal. Uh, no, I'm not trying to. They're asking me about the intermediary. They're very into the intermediary. Torres signing confirmed. Yay, welcome. He doesn't have adaptability issues, so he should be able to just get going right away. Should be able to just get going right away. Emergency recruitment meeting. He has the bad form. I mean, we, you do realize it's the second one we've held, and we haven't played a match since the last one. Okay, I right, like I. But okay, a little emergency re emergency recruitment meeting. They're like, "Yeah, we need a new striker." I'm like, "I know, dude. I freaking know." But that is a question that we will answer tomorrow, chat. It was a heartbreaker today. It was a heartbreaker today. It was a heartbreaker out there. Um. Yeah, but we, we, look, if we won every time, it would be boring. Right? The the game pushes back even when you've played it for 10,000 hours, and that's what we like. You're always learning, always getting better, and we just didn't quite have the right players in the right spots to, to win the league. But we'll be back tomorrow. We're going to raid somebody, so stick around for that. Be fun. Go make somebody's day. But love you guys. Fist bump. Ton of subs today, and I really appreciate it. That's the sort of thing that allows us to go uh, and, and do things like Hidden Grounds. Uh, we're, you know, scouting out different locations uh, to do the next Hidden Grounds episode. So thank you guys so much. Uh, all the gifted subs at the beginning of the stream uh, were, were were massive. Um, I'm trying to find it. It was Muckle Sloth who threw down a ton of gifted. Scythion, Knucklehead, Jeff, Moist, of course, dropped the 50 gifted subs. Thank you so much to Moist. That is an insane batch of gifted subs. And... Um, All right, let's find uh, 
to find somebody. Well, let's raid uh, Davey's on. Let's raid Davey. Guy's a former CSGO pro that loves playing football manager. Let's go make his day. He's part of the hammers. He hops by from time to time. Get the copy pasta together. Get ready to go in and raid with the fury of a thousand suns. And I will see you guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, we did a Reddit video came out this morning. Football manager memes. If you love those, then you can, by all means, go watch it. If I happen to be the person reminding you that it went out today. Uh, and thank you, everybody that is a uh, part of the, a part of the hammers. See you guys. Words. I need to go right back to sleep. I am so tired today. Losing does that too. Bye. Word of the day. Oh, no way, dude. Not even making this up. Emote. Emote. Not emote. Emote. To emote is to express emotion in a very dramatic or obvious way. He stood on the stage. He stood on the stage. Emote. Emoting and gesturing wildly. Emoting. <laughs> e M O T E, by the way. <laughs>